Jaden was taken aback for a second, then calmly said, You're right. Sorry. I'll back off. Being the third wheel all this time hasn't gotten me any info on Mike's dad anyway. He really was laying low. And maybe Mike didn't even know anything about what his father was doing. The FBI might need to find another way to approach this investigation. Little did Jada know, Jasmine had become an unexpected factor in his investigation plan. After that time, Jasmine and Mike had private dates, just the two of them. But they left Jasmine feeling more and more distant from him. Ugh, why does this wig have to be so long? And these freaking shoes! Why do girls want to torture themselves with these things? Jasmine thought about the last time she was with Jaden. How she could just remove the stupid heels and enjoy being carried by him. But of course, that could never happen in front of Mike. Jaden has kept his promise and leaves us two alone. But why do I feel like something is missing? You look really beautiful today. That necklace is divine. Uh, yeah, I got it from my dad's antique cabinet this morning. Guess it once belonged to some ancient Egyptian queen. My dad has a bunch of these. Oh, really? How come? Well, he developed a very deep passion for collecting antiques and has filled our whole house with all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Just then, Mike knew exactly what to do with rich and naive Jasmine while she still looked totally oblivious to it. That night, Jasmine struggled to fall asleep. She wondered how Jaden could just disappear into thin air like that. Fine. Don't let me see you again. I'll make you watch me eat 10 buckets of fried chicken and then force you to run 10 laps while carrying me. Jasmine didn't realize, however, that behind her inexplicable frustration toward Jaden, she actually missed him. The next day, as soon as Jasmine arrived at school, Mike approached her urgently. Have I mentioned that I'm turning 16 this weekend? No, you haven't. Any special plans for your big day then? Yes, actually. That's why I came to find you. I wanted to make sure you had enough time to put together the most stunning outfit, because I'd like you to meet my father there. You must make a good impression on him. Um, wow. I'm gonna need to think about it, okay? After that, Jasmine looked everywhere for Jaden, but couldn't find any trace of him. Jaden, where on earth have you been? That evening, while Jaden was discussing the current situation with his partner, he was surprised to see Jasmine's figure at the door. How did she find her way here? How dare you go AWOL for the past few days? Do you realize how many excuses I needed to give the student supervisor just to get your address? Then Jasmine began to tell Jaden about her latest date with Mike, how she felt that Mike was not the right match for her, and that Mike wanted to introduce her to his father at Mike's birthday party. I think I need to break things off before any family gets involved. However, after the FBI team hit a dead end because they couldn't get any intel, Jaden realized this party was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them to catch the thief. Wait, you can't give up so soon. You were so determined to win Mike over before. Don't just dump him over cold feet. At least wait until after the party to make your decision. Yeah, you're right. I'll go to the party. After that, Jasmine left. She was trying not to feel the sadness building inside her, but the night that she and Jaden nearly kissed played on repeat in her head. Would things be different if I just confessed my feelings to Jaden? I should let him know how I feel about him. So Jasmine headed back to Jaden's place. When she was almost there, she saw him seeing someone off. Huh? There was another person at his house? Why didn't I see him just then? Jasmine quickly hid behind a wall, out of sight. That party is surely our golden ticket. And we thought you going undercover as Jaden and giving that dude a makeover was all in vain. He's a she. And her name is Jasmine. Oh, did someone catch feelings? Don't forget that you're an FBI agent, James. <laughs> Jaden, that is. <laughs> Jasmine couldn't believe what she just heard and saw. When the man left, she stormed right over to Jaden. When were you going to tell me about your double life, James? Ugh, I wish I could tell you everything, but I really can't. But I won't deny what you did here. I'm an FBI agent, and I've been undercover as a high school student to, to follow Mike. Jasmine, please listen to me. I'll tell you everything when the right time comes. So I was just a tool that you used to get closer to Mike. And since that didn't work, you're done with me? No, that's not. And why Mike? What do you need from him? I can't tell you anything else right now. But please just be careful around him, okay? He's not as nice as he tries to seem. I'm going to send FBI agents to keep an eye on you at the party. No, you will not. You won't do anything because you and the FBI are going to leave me alone. Jasmine, please. As much as it hurt to look at him again, Jasmine turned back around. My friends call me Gucci, but I guess you wouldn't know.
While Jasmine was still mad at Jaden, she couldn't help questioning why the FBI had to send people to follow Mike. Suddenly, she remembered the overheard conversation. That party was surely our golden ticket. And we thought you going undercover as Jaden and giving that dude a makeover was all in vain. Maybe I could find the answer at Mike's birthday party. In the following days, Jaden relentlessly tried in every way to make amends with Jasmine. He messaged her on every social platform, from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter, and she blocked him on each one. He flew paper planes that read, I'm sorry, into Jasmine's room, but she just stared coldly at him through the window while tearing the planes all up and throwing them in the trash. One morning, Jasmine woke up and even found a dove delivering Jaden's apology letter, but she completely ignored it still. Mike's birthday party finally came. Why do I feel so unsettled? Maybe it was because of Gary's hamburger this afternoon? Meanwhile, Mike was also lost in his own thoughts. Will Dad be able to get on with the plan? I wonder what disguise he'll show up in. Right then, Tiffany approached them. Mike, I have a present for you. Mike opened the envelope to find pictures of Jasmine from when she was a tomboy. I just wanted to remind you of the person you're really dating. I don't care about who she was before, because I love who she is now, my amazing girlfriend. Jasmine felt partly appreciative of Mike's feelings for her, but she was also exhausted from the pressure of trying to be someone she wasn't. If only you knew that this isn't the real me. As they walked away, Mike leaned in close and whispered in Jasmine's ear, Let's go meet my dad, privately. Jasmine followed Mike to the rooftop, but she saw nobody when they got there. Where is he? Just be patient. He always shows up on time. At that moment, a kind-looking old man appeared. Jasmine looked around in confusion, wondering where he had come from. Before she could introduce herself, he started to speak. So you must be the lovely Jasmine. Mike has told me so much about you. I heard your father is a famous collector of antiquities. Y yes you know my dad? I know he has something that's truly coveted. Jasmine had no idea what he was talking about. She turned to Mike and saw him mouthing, It's you. Come here, girl. I have a gift for you. A diamond ring that's perfect for your delicate hands. Jasmine hesitated, but somehow she found herself slowly reaching out her hand. Just before her hand could reach his, there was a rustling sound. Rat! Suddenly, there was a loud explosion and smoke filled the air. Jasmine fell to the ground, unconscious. Jaden rushed in and saw Mike's father disappear into the smoke as they fled. His head told him to chase them, but seeing Jasmine lying on the ground, he immediately ran to Jasmine and carried her out of there. Jasmine woke up and saw her dad and three brothers anxiously standing around. Through their accounts, she knew that an anonymous message had been sent to her father last night, demanding he hand over a precious necklace in exchange for Jasmine. The police confirmed that the sender of that threatening message is a career thief. But I wonder how he knew our family had that necklace. Jasmine recalled wearing that necklace to see Mike and revealing to him that her dad was an antique collector. Could that very thief be... Remember, he's been doing this for a long time. They call him the Phantom Thief. Surely he has a talent for sniffing out valuable items and evading the police. Unfortunately, it's the same this time. Actually, that young police officer could have caught him, but he chose to save your sister. Our family owes him big time. Is that young police officer Jaden? Later, Jaden came to visit Jasmine at the hospital. Can you tell me the truth now? Is the FBI chasing a career criminal who is none other than Mike's dad? You're right, because he works in mysterious ways. I had to approach him through his son, Mike. So why didn't you arrest him when you had the chance? Weren't you just waiting for that moment? Because, because you were in danger. At that moment, I could only think about getting to you. <sighs> All right, I'll give you that one. Can you tell me what you found out? Maybe I can help. Then Jaden told Jasmine that through spying on Mike, he discovered that Mike was his father's informant. Mike would scour rich girls, then point out the targets to his father who'd steal their valuables. That's why Mike had targeted Tiffany before. But as soon as he learned she was a fake rich girl and Jasmine was the real deal, he switched his focus to Jasmine. I am so sorry I kept the truth from you for so long. I really care about you, and I was trying to keep you from getting hurt. And you did anyway. I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive me. You did save my life after all. I think we can call it square. So, what's our next move then? I really don't know. I might have an idea. Elsewhere, Mike and his dad were scheming. I didn't expect that sissy Jaden to be in the FBI. Don't worry, I know how to deal with him.
The next day, reports of an antique auction flooded the news. A once-in-a-lifetime exhibition, all from one man's private collection, will be auctioned to the highest bidder. The collection includes antiquities from all over the world, including a necklace said to belong to Cleopatra. Its estimated value is over $100 billion. The streets were also plastered with billboards and banners about that auction. In the evening of the auction, all of the IPs of the upper class gathered in the hotel's main lobby to prepare for the big event. In addition, hundreds of security guards and police officers were hired to guard the auction jewelry 24-7. Before the start of the auction, Jasmine's dad gave a welcome speech to all the guests. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to welcome you all to today's event. As you know, I collect antiques as a hobby, so to share some of the joy this collection has brought me, the profits from today's auction will be donated to the orphanage. Sir, is it true that Cleopatra's necklace will also be auctioned today? That's right. However, it's not here. It's currently being kept in a very secure place that even a mosquito couldn't get through, and will be presented during the final round. Aren't you afraid that the Phantom Thief, Master of Disguise, will steal it? Well, he can certainly try me. <laughs> the whole crowd burst into laughter, without knowing, from a corner, an elegant lady was watching them all with a smirk on her face. At 9 o'clock sharp, while the sounds of the auction echoed through the hotel's halls, someone in a black shirt and wearing a backpack appeared at the door, trying to put a key in the lock. Freeze! Hands over your head! Busted, you thief! I'm... Uh, I'm... not... In the lobby, chaos reigned after it became known that the phantom thief had approached the treasure. Jasmine was extremely nervous, too. Before long, a police officer went onto the stage. Please don't worry, the thief was apprehended by the police while trying to open the door. The auction will continue as scheduled. Everyone felt relieved, and the room erupted into applause. At that moment, the elegant yet mysterious lady walked toward the elevator quietly, heading to the penthouse. She then swiftly snuck into the room and retrieved the necklace with ease. Those stupid cops must be bringing that fool down to the station right now. She then put the box into her bag and left the room. Suddenly, an old janitor bumped into her. I'm... I'm terribly sorry, miss. The elegant lady grumbled, then used the emergency exit to rush up to the rooftop. On the roof, a helicopter was already waiting, with Mike inside. Mike's dad quickly gave him the necklace. Just when the helicopter took off, policemen came rushing to catch him. We finally got you, you weasel! Ha <laughs> ha! I've still got the necklace. I win again, you fools. Oh, you mean this necklace? What? H how could you? It turned out that Jaden had swapped the box when they bumped into each other in the hall. Upon this admission, in the helicopter, Mike eagerly opened the box, which turned out to be just a jumping jack toy. No! After the police took Mike's dad away, Jasmine and her dad rushed to Jaden. Thank you so much for saving my daughter and still catching the thief. Thank you for all your help. We couldn't have caught him if you didn't fabricate this event. This whole thing was Jasmine's idea, and the event itself was fake. All the antiques auctioned tonight were real, and those proceeds will still go to charity. <laughs> we did it! You're right. We did it. Whatever happened with the other thief who got caught earlier? Oh, he was hired to distract the FBI, but we knew from the start he wasn't our thief. Luckily, the arrest announcement was just the thing we needed to get Mike's dad to make his move and to make him think he was going to get away with it. Now I just need to know how you switched those boxes so smoothly. Are you a magician, too? <laughs> nope, I'm just me. The next day, Jaden finally had some time alone with Jasmine, and it was finally time to tell her the rest of everything. It might not be my place to say, but I understand how you've been feeling. Trying to be someone? Heck, it's my job. But it's not your job to change to make other people like you. The right people are the ones who love you for who you really are. People like, uh, me. Jasmine was touched. She had so many things she wanted to say, but she was simply speechless. She turned to Jaden, and upon seeing just his side profile, she blushed. I, I, uh, are you okay? Jasmine was going to respond, but she hiccuped again. I think I know what to do. Here I was, confronting my greatest fear. Math! Wendy, focus. What is 9 plus 11? A, 19, or B, 21? The numbers whirled around me. Panic set in. Uh, um, 9 plus 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, equals 19? No, 21? Great numerical gods, why is this so confusing? You're so extra. Sit up, I'll show you again. I still don't get why I have to do this, though. It's not like I'm going to school. 
Yeah, I quit school not long ago to help mom out making a couple of bucks. In case you haven't noticed, we're dirt poor. I'm Wendy, by the way. Fifteen and fabulous. Well, sorta. <laughs> I know I'm a big silly goofball, but the good thing is my brother, Leo, does not share the same brain cell with me. That guy ate knowledge for breakfast. He went to this elite high school, on scholarship of course, and always a top student three years in a row. That's like genius. Mom also said he's our only ticket out of poverty. That's why she held three jobs at once, while I gathered scrap metal to sell to the scrapyard to support his study. The three of us have been working hard to create a better life for our family. But then, one afternoon, I suddenly noticed posters of Leo that accused him of breaking his classmate's arm. What nonsense is this? I tore them all down and rushed home to see a bunch of gangsters breaking our things. My mom and Leo were in the corner, begging them to stop. Stop! What on earth are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, brat? I'm collecting compensation for your brother's victim. He messed with the wrong person. The son of a loaded family. Y you got the wrong guy. Leo wouldn't hurt a fly. Right, Leo? I turned to him, but he just lowered his hat in guilt and defeat. How much, then? Three thousand dollars. <laughs> Three thousand? <laughs> you kidding, right? Do I look like I'm kidding? Let her go. Just stop it. All of you. Then mom rushed to the kitchen and brought back all of our saving jars. They're about $1,000. Just take them and leave us alone. I'll pay the rest later. The thug let me go and grabbed the jars. We'll be back next month for the rest. Mom fell to her knees. She looked so hopeless amongst the mishmash. Mom, Wendy, I'm so sorry. Please let me help. The school already suspended me for a whole month. I'll, I'll get a job. I'll pay for the debt. No, my boy. Use this free time to study. Once you come back to school, I want you to be the perfect student so no one can ever look down on us again, okay? But what about the debt? Just leave it to me. I'll work some extra shifts here and there and everything will be sorted. Now go study. Th thank you. Mom, I won't let you down again. Then he left the room. That's when mom's smile wears off. I knew she only said that so Leo could have his peace of mind. The truth was, no amount of mom's extra shifts could get us 2,000 by next month. I think if the math was right, it's time for me to say the day. I tried to get a job, but somehow they all lasted for only one shift. Like when I was waiting for this diner, all the food and drink just fell out of my tray. Or that time when I work at construction site and I got my foot stuck on the thing I just built. <sighs> I came home feeling deflated. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was Nathan, Leo's best friend. I could instantly feel my cheeks heating up. Hello, Erp to Wendy. Are you gonna let me in? Or are we gonna stand here, awkwardly? Uh, oh, uh, sure, come on in. <laughs> you look, uh, exhausted. You sure you're all right? It's just the whole thing with Leo. I've been trying to get a job to pay for the debt, but nothing worked. I'm sorry all that happened to your family, and I want to help you, but there's something you should know first. After the talk, Nathan got me a job as a maid for his cousin Zach's house. Other maids were showing me around when, Get out! A maid ran past us, crying her eyes out. What was that? That is the young master Zach throwing a tantrum. He's the illegitimate son of the light master and was only brought here five years ago by his grandfather. And let's just say, Madam Linda, his stepmom, is not so thrilled about it. They've been on each other's necks ever since. The girl you just saw was Madam Linda's favorite. She's been a thorn in Master Zack's side for a while now. Then I gotta find a way to get on both their good sides to prove that I'm perfect for this job. Okay, first day at work, Madam Linda was complaining about Zack's toy car collection, so I threw them all away. But Zack went bonkers on me and went rummaging through the junkyard to find every single one of them. S sorry, Master Zack, it's just Madam Linda, oopsies. He immediately stormed off to confront Madam Linda. I felt bad, so to make amends between them, I cooked his favorite soup and told him that Madam Linda made it for him as an apology. But as he took the first bite, his face turned green and dashed to the nearest toilet. Whoops. One rainy day, I was taking the trash out and saw a strange woman peeking from the fence. She suddenly tripped, so I helped her up, asking if she was looking for someone, but she just ran away. Whoa, Jesus, how long have you been standing there? Long enough. Come inside, it's freezing out here. Uh, sure. Later that day, I was cleaning Madame Linda's room when accidentally knocked over her jewelry box. It crashed on the floor, spilling jewelry everywhere. One of the bangles snapped in half. I frantically pocketed it to fix it later. When the gruff butler swung the door open, I apologized and promised to fix the jewelry box, but he still insisted on firing me. Just then, Zack stepped in and ordered him to let it slide. Zack then stayed and watched me fix it. Where'd you learn to do that? It's nothing. I grew up in a trailer park. Everything we own came from the junkyard. They just need a little fixer-upper. 
I've been doing it since forever, so... You got a gift. Besides, reusing things is... cool. <laughs> Whatever you say, pretty guy. Say, you wanna hang out sometime? Like a... date? Maybe. Won't your girlfriend get jealous? <laughs> what girlfriend? I'm very single and ready to mingle right now. <laughs> sure, why not? On the weekend, Zach took me to his favorite coffee shop, and I got to see a softer, more caring side of him. Turned out he never got a girlfriend, so I made him a flirting tutorial. For a price, of course. <laughs> At first, I thought he was just practicing on me by giving me flowers and fancy chocolates, but then he continued to woo me with my own list. He set up a romantic picnic under the stars in the backyard, took me to the park, and we watched the enchanting sunset together. That night, we walked back to the mansion. Before coming inside, Zach stopped me. These past weeks that I've known you have been the best moments of my life. Wendy, I think I've fallen for you. Will you be my girlfriend? <laughs> Where did you learn those cheesy words? Do you like them? <clears throat> is it hot in here? Or is it just you? Stop! <laughs> I just need you to promise to be on my side, no matter what. I promise. When Zach left, I returned to my room. I pulled out my diary and then ticked off the last box on my list. Well, it was fun, Zach, but everything must come to an end. Soon you'll pay for everything you did to my family. I knew the truth back when Nathan came to our house. There's something you should know first. Your brother was tricked. He didn't start the fight. A guy mocked your poor family, so Leo turned aggressive. After the incident, the guy was salty Leo beated him. So he faked a broken arm and had his family come for yours. They don't need your money. They just want you to suffer. And who's that guy? He's Zach, my cousin. What he did was wrong, so I'm on your side on this. And there's another thing. Nathan played a video of Linda and her thugs threatening my mom and demanding more money. My rage became scorching. That moment, I decided to get revenge. That's why I became a maid at Zach's house, sabotaged his relationship with Linda, and made him fall for me. Everything was going just as planned so far. But the next thing I knew, mom called me to tell me that Leo had been expelled from school and ran away from home. My blood was boiling. That's it. Today's the day Zach goes down. I pulled out Linda's broken bangle and placed it on my bedside table. During the daily room check, the butler spotted it right away and informed Linda. She rushed over to reprimand me for stealing her jewelry. Just then, Zach swooped in to defend me. Zach, you have to trust me. I didn't steal it. I just wanted to fix it before turning it to Madame Linda. Don't worry, I believe you. You heard her. I know you despise me, but don't you dare drag my loved one into this. Oh, finally put it out in the open, huh? You and your low-life girlfriend. Birds of a feather. You're right, we're alike, and that means we're nothing like you, you evil witch. Ha! Huh. Let's see how you like it. Alone on the streets? Guards, throw them out now! The next second, Zack and I were dumped on the sidewalk along with our belongings. Watching him grappling his stuff, I couldn't help but chuckle. How does it feel to be discarded like an unwanted object? Enlightening, isn't it? What are you saying? You remember Leo, the person who broke your arm? Who you used to extort money from my family? I'm his sister. I think you got it wrong. Leo didn't break my arm. He only shoved me to the ground and said something like, don't talk nonsense about his family. I didn't care, but Linda kept telling me to skip school the next day. She must have used me to make a fuss. You mocked my family for being dirt poor. That's why Leo was so mad at you. That's not true. I used to be poor too. <sighs> you remember the woman lurking around the mansion? That's my real mom. She just wanted to make sure I was okay. Turned out, Zack and his mom were abandoned by his dad because of their humble background. Then his grandpa found him. Though Zack didn't want to, his mom made him come with his grandpa so he'd have a better life. But what his mom didn't know was that heck of a mansion was the coldest, most isolated place. That is, until you came. And it hit me. Zack is telling the truth. That meant I had taken revenge on the wrong person. Shoot! I am so, so sorry. I had no idea. And now you're kicked out. Leo's gone. And there's a huge debt. I don't know what to do. Hey, hey, it's all right. One thing at a time, Kay. I'm not mad at you or anything. I just wish you'd told me. But it's fine. I don't really like that house anyway. What about your brother? He got expelled and left. I'm sure he's okay. I'll help you find him, yeah? Thank you. And I'm sorry. I don't know how to make it up to you. You don't have to. I got a feeling you didn't come up with this twisted plan. I didn't. It's actually your cousin, Nathan. I took Zach back to my place where he'd crash in the meantime. Mom was in tears. She told me that Leo was accused of plagiarizing an essay so he could no longer go to that school. But Leo's too smart to do such a thing. So Zach proposed we investigate at the school. To find whose essay Leo supposedly copied, we broke into the school's computer lab that night. We were snooping around when suddenly, Zach was grabbed from behind and dragged away. I slowly turned around and was shocked to the core. I sprinted to Nathan's house, banging on the door. Nathan! Zach! Zach was kidnapped! He's the heir to Adam's estate. They took him away for the ransom. The heir?
there? What do you mean? Your grandfather's lawyer came to see Zack and I overheard him. Your grandfather's sick, so he authorized a lawyer to hand the will to his sole heir. Zack! The will? Do you know where it is? If we swap it for a fake one with someone else's name on it, they'll release Zack and target that person instead. Great idea. I think Zack left it in his bedroom. Maybe it's still there. Nathan and I hurried over to Zack's house. Nathan snuck into his bedroom while I was on the lookout at the door. Nathan switched the will for a fake one and took out a lighter and set it on fire. Just then, I turned on the light, scaring him to death. What on earth, Wendy? Kill the lights or we'll be caught. You mean, you'll be caught? Then I opened the door, revealing everyone in his family and my brother Leo. What's going on? Enjoying the taste of your own medicine, cousin? Yeah, you just got busted. Remember when we were at the lab? I was shocked to the core to see my brother muffling Zack. Shh, be quiet or we'll get caught. Leo, I thought you left. Mom was worried sick. I know, I'm sorry, but I need to sort this out. Things have been sketchy ever since that incident with this guy. And now with this, I gotta prove my innocence. So I came here and found this. Look. Turns out, Leo's essay was identical to yours, Nathan. You took advantage of me to get revenge on Zack when he wasn't to blame. You told Leo Zack was badmouthing our family to stir things up between them. You made our lives miserable. I trusted you. I can't believe you'd go this far. You're always obsessed with Grandpa's inheritance. Everything's a competition for you to prove that you deserve to be a successor. All that work, but still nothing. Do you know how many sleepless nights I had to study? Or to hatch a plan? Worrying mom and dad would blame me for not trying? For not being better? And you just showed up and everyone sees you as this golden child. And all my efforts have gone to waste. Why, Grandpa? Why not me? You were left out of the will due to your greed and scheming behavior. Now I know it's your parents' fault, and there will be severe consequences for them. And you, Nathan, you will join the army after graduation to serve the country, get disciplined, and come back a better man. Guards, take them away! As Nathan made his exit, he paused at the sight of Leo and I. I'm truly sorry. For everything! Then he walked out the door. In the end, Grandpa chose to give Zack his share of the fortune. Zack, however, refused. He never wanted the money. All he wanted was to live comfortably with his mom. So that night, he packed up his things and was ready to go back home. His true home. Seeing Zack, I realized bearing hatred towards someone cannot solve your problem. It just puts you through so much pain, and even hurt other innocent people along the way. It's best just to focus on yourself. You do you, and things will work out on their own. Like now that all mysteries are debunked, our family is free of debt, and Leo can go back to school. Full scholarship. Also, to compensate for what we've been through, Zack's grandpa decided to start a charity fund, and my family was the first to benefit from it. They even helped my mom secure a steady job. As for me, I found a knack for making things and found my place as an apprentice at a pottery studio. My co-workers have become my extended family. They always make fun of me whenever he picks me up. Hop on. We're going to a very special place today. Where to? It's a surprise. Hold tight. Not every day a girl outside the aerospace community like me could attend this creative science festival thingy, but here I was, all thanks to my genius boyfriend Mike, who just got accepted into MIT's aerospace engineering program. This is all really interesting. So great that Mike brought me here. Hey, you ruined my project. Who are you? Sorry, I, I'm Mike's, Mike? I can't believe he's talking to another girl when his girlfriend is in trouble here. The girl followed Mike and immediately fixed the model I just broke. Such an unfortunate brain behind her flashy clothes. Shh, keep it down. She's Mike's girlfriend. Really? Our valedictorian is into airheads? Huh? I thought Mike and Liana were a thing. Liana, the pretty girl who just fixed a freaking spacecraft model in a split second is being paired with my boyfriend? I'm Chloe, by the way. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself sooner. I just, ugh, never felt so self-conscious before. Mike and I have been together since high school. Back then, I was popular and had many boys chasing me. Everyone seemed amazed that a girl like me was with a nerd like him. But now, Mike's already an intern at NASA despite being only a freshman. Looks like he's a celebrity among his peers, and I was just his brainless girlfriend. For the first time ever, I felt like I had no place being such an elite student's girlfriend. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened at the science festival, so I decided to talk about it in my talk show, Bubble Buzz. Although I didn't show my face, I had heaps of listeners and every time the show was on, they flooded my comments section with excitement. Welcome back, my friends. So today's topic is, can a person's heart change when they go to college? I have a friend, Sally. She's been with her boyfriend for two years, 10 months and 21 days. 
But now he's gone to college in another state, living among new friends and new girls. Should she be worried that she'll become old news? Obviously, out of sight, out of mind, your friend should dump him before he does. No matter how good a relationship is, it can't escape the three-year curse. The three-year thing is real. All high school romances are doomed in the real world. Mike and I had been together for almost three years. Was this three-year curse really hitting us? Every comment seemed to believe it, while user Twinkle Star seemed to think this whole curse was silly. Curses don't exist. Relationships aren't easy. Both partners have to be willing to make an effort in their long-term relationship. Two years or ten years, it's irrelevant. Why does someone as serious as Twinkle Star listen to my show anyway? Since my early days hosting the show, this person always comments with confusing and boring quotes. I'm sure the curse was not a silly thing at all. Whether it was my three-year friendship with my first best friend Ella, or my parents divorcing after three years of marriage, the three-year milestone was real. Actually, I do know one couple who beat the curse. They're my grandparents. Grandpa's rather a cold and reserved person who only had eyes for his wife. So I asked Grandma what the secret to their successful relationship was. First, be grateful for your partner and not take love for granted. Second, know him better than you know yourself. Third, learn to forgive and apologize. Was that it? That wasn't exactly helpful. Our relationship was in a life or death situation and I needed to really do something. Right that moment, someone appeared in the kitchen and I couldn't believe it. My sister Mindy. I hadn't seen her in ages since she moved out with dad. I explained my fears to Mindy and she seemed to understand exactly why I was so concerned. Don't worry, sis. I'll stay here for a while so I can help you two overcome this curse and reignite your passion. First of all, as Mike's the biggest nerd I know, you need to appear more academic. Taking Mindy's advice, I gave myself this academia aesthetic, then went to see Mike at the amusement park. Oh look, there he is. Huh? Chloe? Um, you look different. Since when did you wear glasses? I've, um, always worn them, Mike. You must not have noticed. I stay up late last night to watch a physics documentary. Now it's time to impress Mike with my knowledge about how water fountains actually work without electricity and run solely on gravity. How the fat in ice cream impacts the freezing point and I could taste the fat droplets. And how g-force and inertia were taken into account when mechanics made roller coasters for the thrill. But he didn't seem impressed at all. Chloe, you're not yourself today. Are you okay? I'm not okay. I've been wiggling my foot at you for ages, but you never noticed my undone laces. You didn't let me try your ice cream first, as you always do, and you didn't notice the effort I put into learning all this sciencey stuff for you. I'm sorry. I have this big project on my mind, and... Mike Jenkins, you've changed. The Mike I know and love was attentive and wouldn't let me walk around with untied shoes. You don't love me anymore. It all got too much for me, so I hurried off. Well, as quickly as I could with my shoelaces flailing. As soon as I got home, I phoned Mindy and told her everything. I was so lucky to have my big sis. OMG, he did what? It sounds like he just doesn't care about you anymore. Do you think? Um, maybe... Maybe he was just... No, if he cared, he would have come after you. Instead, he let you walk on dangerous sneakers. Mindy was right. Mike grew cold on me. This three-year curse was real. Now what should I do? There's only one thing. You'll have to test him. I've been sitting here for the past hour and Mike hasn't... Here he comes. This was Mindy's idea. Faking a car malfunction and calling Mike for help. Wow, you're so good. I'd still be stranded here alone without you. You could have asked someone else or called a garage. There wasn't even anything wrong with... It doesn't matter. But you're my boyfriend. Yes, your very busy boyfriend who lives in a different state. Anyway, I got a dash, and we'll have to take a rain check on next week. I have a lot on my plate. Then Mike left, leaving me more afraid of losing him than ever. As if he just left. His new environment changed him even more than I thought. Chloe, you have to infiltrate his space now before you lose him forever. So I went sneaking into Mike's dorm room and transformed it from nerdy to romantic chic. I hear footsteps. I better hide. I can't wait for him to see it. There's Mike, but huh? Who's with him? Oh, wow. Romantic much? Then the other person started taking their clothes off. I leaped out of the closet ready to tackle this man stealer to the ground, but hold on a second. That's actually a man. Mike's roommate, Gus. Chloe, um, what are you doing here? I'm sorry. I just wanted to surprise you and, and ask you to come on a date with me today, tomorrow, whenever you're free. I told you I'm busy this week. I have an inspection tomorrow. So, you mean I'm bothering you? You don't need me anymore? 
Here, you can use my ID card and go with Mike to the inspection. Make it a hot date. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. One way or another, my infiltration mission was a success. <laughs> the next day, I came to this technical area with Mike and just stuck to him, not knowing what else I was supposed to do. Chloe, don't touch anything, okay? Mike, there you are. You have to come and see this. She dragged him off, and did she just smirk at me? Ugh, what an awful pick-me girl. She was obviously trying to separate us. No way was I gonna let her get away with that. I'd show them all that I deserve to be with him. While Liana's by herself walking around with a VR headset, I came to tell her to keep her hands off my boyfriend. Oh, there you are. Stay away from Mike. Little do you know that he has a girlfriend. You're just a clingy airhead that he's too polite to break up with. I'm the perfect girl for him, not you. I, I'm the most influential radio host on social media and a third wheel like you call me an airhead? I'll make sure everyone knows what a horrible person you are. Really, so scary. As if I'll be worried about those pathetic gossip girls. How dare she? I pushed her and suddenly, Smash! Her headset broke into pieces on the floor. Oh no, Mike told me not to touch anything. What are you doing here? What happened? I'm so sorry, Chloe. I know that you're not okay with this whole thing, but I'm Mike's teammate and we have to interact a lot. Nothing is going on between us. You're overreacting. Then she ran away in tears like she wasn't at fault. She's lying. I didn't say that. She said she wants. Chloe, enough. I'm too busy to worry about what chaos you're gonna cause next. I think we should take a break. He took the ID pass off me, leaving me feeling like my whole world had crumbled. After crying an ocean of tears, I decided to make this right. I threw away my ego and texted him first, but before I hit send, I received a message from Mike saying he was sorry and we would have a trip to celebrate our three-year anniversary. This meant we weren't over and the curse wasn't true. Ooh, I needed to figure out which outfits to bring. I got everything packed and ready for our vacation of a lifetime. It was gonna be so romantic. But all of a sudden, Liana rushed to us and flung her arms around Mike. My pet dog, Nova, she's, she's passed away. I can't be alone right now. I'd rather die. That lying party pooper. Poor Mike didn't know what to say, so she just jumped in the back seat without my permission. No problem. The more, the merrier. I'll invite my sister to join us too. Mindy proved to be super useful, always interjecting whenever Liana approached Mike. But Liana just became more and more shameless. She glued herself to Mike and had the audacity to lie down next to him like I was invisible and even ate his ice cream. Worse still, my oblivious boyfriend didn't seem bothered at all. She's more cunning than I thought. You need to step up your game. It was such a beautiful night, but that third wheel Liana was buzzing around Mike like a mosquito. Then she started talking about physics stuff, and now he's so caught up in their conversation, I may as well have disappeared. Hmm, how could I make Liana see Mike loves me, not her? Well, I wasn't sure if he loves me anymore. Chloe, 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 you long for attention so badly you're willing to hurt yourself. She's already hurt because of you. This is her special three-year anniversary, and you invited yourself like how you've always wormed your way in. I bet you don't even have a dog. I diverted my gaze from a fake crying Liana to a confused-looking Mike. Chloe, what are you trying to do? I'm worried you've lost your passion for me because we're at the three-year mark. We have different interests, and I can't help but feel insecure about us. If you keep acting like this, well, I just don't know. I've been thinking about our future too, and I've decided it's time for us to... Oh, no, 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 this isn't happening. I think I'm pregnant. We got back two days ago and Mike still hadn't contacted me. This curse had caught up with me and I lost him for good. I just wish I hadn't lied about the baby. Then maybe our breakup wouldn't have been so awkward. This called for retail therapy. I stepped outside and saw Mike with a massive suitcase. Chloe, I've abandoned the project and dropped out of college. I'm going to take care of you, both of you. Mike scurried around the house to make it pregnant woman friendly. He threw out all junk food, coffee, and even mayonnaise. Also, my high heels were packed away and Mozart was played everywhere in the house. Apparently, it'll make the baby a genius. We were going to have the perfect, happy family life. But when I went to my room to get my laptop for my next radio show, I couldn't find it anywhere. 
I asked Mike and he said, I packed it up with your high heels, makeup, books, and put them all in storage. You don't need any distractions. Just me, you, and the baby from now on. No more radio, studying, or friends. We can have a bunch of kids and grow old in this house. What? This wasn't what I wanted. Neither of us should have boring, unfulfilling lives or give up our dreams, right? I might not have my laptop, but I still had my phone. Welcome back. Today's topic is my friend Sally, again. She lied about being pregnant so her boyfriend wouldn't leave her. Should she keep lying or tell the truth? This time, Twinkle Star appeared again. I know she's always been a brave girl who isn't afraid of admitting her own faults and correcting her mistakes. She should tell her boyfriend the truth and explain how much she loves him. Hmm, sounds oddly specific. Who's this person? Actually, Bubble Buzz, we know each other. Before I could ask him anything else, Twinkle Star went offline. Whoever that was, I think they were right. So I went downstairs to talk to Mike, only he wasn't there. Instead, Mindy jumped out of nowhere holding a pregnancy test and a bottle of Coke. I just need to dunk this in here and the plus sign will show up clear as day in case Mike has any doubt about the baby. No need to. I'm going to tell him the truth. Are you sure about that? What if Mike gets mad? I stopped and thought about it. No, as scary as it was, I couldn't do this anymore. I was looking out for Mike by telling him the truth. Where was he? He had to be around here somewhere. Liana, why was she here with Mike? Mike, I'm sorry, but Chloe's not pregnant. She admitted on her radio show. You deserve to be with someone who wouldn't make up such awful lies. Someone like me. Oh no, I lost the chance to tell him firsthand. Now Mike would never talk to me ever again. Chloe, wait. I couldn't turn around and bear the disappointment in his eyes. I couldn't blame anyone, any third wheel or curse for destroying my relationship. Hey there, I know this is an unscheduled show, but I wanted to talk to y'all. That girl I talked about yesterday, Sally, well, she's me. I faked being pregnant to keep my relationship, but my boyfriend hates me now. I was so terrified of this three-year curse that I became this jealous monster. Mike even dropped out because of me. I'm so selfish for expecting him to spend every minute of his day with me. He needs his own life too. We both do. It's the time of heart that makes our time together more exciting and our love more passionate. Now we've broken up and it's all my fault. I stopped to catch my breath. Who told you I wanted to break up? Didn't, didn't you say you thought carefully about our future and made a decision? You know what, after all your silly shenanigans, including faking your pregnancy, I'm still madly in love with you. So the decision I made was, Chloe Ruth Evanson, you're crazy, kooky, and one of a kind. I can't stand the thought of not having you in my life. Will you marry me? Yes? But Mike, after our engagement, you should continue your studies, projects, internship and whatnot. You don't have to stay by my side all the time. What? I thought you'd like that. We can be together all day and make enough babies for a soccer team, right? Relax, I'm just kidding. I knew you were lying about the baby all along. Your grandpa told me. Turns out, Twinkle Star was none other than my grandpa, who saw that I needed some guidance and tried to give me objective advice. Mike only went along with the lie to tease me. Hmm, who knew my nerdy boyfriend could be so playful? Or should I say, my fiance? You are watching the incredible Barry's Blue. I'm Sonya, the super talented lead vocalist, and that guy over there rocking the guitar is Eric, my boyfriend. He's also our composer and backing vocalist. Yep, my man's good at everything, just like me. Actually, he's the one who discovered my vocal talent and helped me on my road to fame. Our debut album exploded onto the charts. And the rest is history. Eric asked me to be his girlfriend right on stage after our set. I don't know who was more excited, me or my adoring fans. Everything was perfect. And then our next album flopped. I guess all that pressure had interrupted Eric's writing process. I tried to send him positive energy. We had a big show coming up to debut our new single and start our comeback. Who knows when the sun will rise again, right? But during our performance, as Eric stepped back to give me the spotlight, I stepped forward and suddenly slipped and fell. S Sonia, your nose, it's crooked. I was rushed into surgery, but my nose looked like a lightning bolt. I can't look like this. I must be beautiful. You'll always be the cutest girl to me. No need to worry, we can still fix it. But right after that, the photo of my busted nose hit the headlines. I got ridiculed for praising natural beauty and then getting plastic surgery. 
What vultures? I had to upload the video of me slipping to end these rumors, but they claimed I did it on purpose to get attention. What on earth? We thought all that drama was finally over, but no. Right when my nose healed, my chubby pre-puberty secondary school photo appeared all over the internet, which sparked rumors about me having my whole body reconstructed. Some anonymous posts even made up that I was hot-tempered and snooty to band crew and waiting staff. I mean, maybe I could be a bit abrupt, but I was famous, so I was allowed to get what I wanted. Then, Let's Cancel Sonya began to circulate. Do these tragic people have nothing better to do than gossip about me? But my fans took notice, and a load of our tour tickets got cancelled. My manager freaked out and made me go on leave until the rumors died down. How ridiculous! Worse still, they were actually going to try to replace me? The beautiful, one-of-a-kind lead vocalist? How dare they do this to me? I am the band! Hang in there, babe. I promise I'll find a way to get you back. Obviously, my photos didn't leak themselves. Some jerk did this, and it's now my life mission to track them down and make them pay. Okay, so from my internet searching, I traced the original rumor to this group of my anti-fans. Can you believe they actually met up at this cafe once a month just to badmouth me? They even had a schedule. How ridiculous! What had I ever done to them? Disguising myself, I showed up to find out more clues. Hmm, inside were those terrible leaked pictures of me. Jeez, these people clearly had way too much time on their hands. Wait, this guy looks familiar. Is he... Owen? My high school crush? He was my senior in the music club and a super talented singer, guitarist, and composer. But how come he's my anti-fan? I never even spoke to him. The group buzzed about how pretentious I am. They even said Eric and I were fake dating just to cover up the news about our latest album flop. Ahem. Obviously, our love is real. I never tire of hearing trash talking about that Eric guy's songs, but it's closing time. If you posted about Barry's Blue, please claim your money from the counter before leaving. What? Owen actually paid them to slander my band? Why was he so intent on ruining my career? Did he have a personal vendetta against me? I just had to find my own way to figure all this out. Making myself one of them should do it. I immediately called to apply for the job, and I got it. Showtime! It's important to look the part, so I dressed up as this innocent-looking girl for my first shift. Thanks to the magic of makeup, even I could hardly recognize myself. Call me Summer from now on. After the introduction, Owen immediately gave me tons of work. I had to do the heavy lifting and stinky, dirty work. I was a pampered star, not a grunt. Ugh, he's such an exploitive boss. I must have been crazy to have ever crushed on him. In the evening, the anti-fan group showed up again, followed by a familiar face. It's Rena, Owen's little sister. Back in high school, she was quite arrogant. It seemed like nothing had changed. Did you know that Sonya was such a weirdo in high school? Now that she's famous, she's acting like she's above everyone else. Stop right there, carrot hair. What's your name? Um, I'm Summer. So, Summer, here we've got a special requirement for every newbie. You have to pass the anti-fan test. Tell us, what do you think's the most irritating thing about Sonya? Ugh, now I have to defame myself? Actually, I was Sonya's childhood friend. Well, just a neighbor. She was the worst kid in the neighborhood. What did Sonya look like when she was young? And how was her personality? She was chubby and cruel to other kids. She threw bugs at them and never shared her toys. Take notes, guys. Remember to cite the source as Sonya's close neighbor. You can get some bonus, too, for contributing useful information like this. Was Rena also involved in this, along with her brother? When Rena left, the other anti-fans Caleb, Violet, and June still didn't leave, but turned to the stage and started tuning the instruments? What? They'd composed a whole song to mock me, not only about my surgery rumors, but also that I was a vain, hot-tempered, competitive, talentless, disrespectful, and never used my abundant money to help others. Her music was good, but the insolence killed their skills. I'm curious, why do people hate Sonya that much? She's rude and her music sucks. Yeah, her natural voice is good, but it doesn't have any emotions. She probably doesn't know anything about love and doesn't have any friends either. Those comments from the anti-fans got me thinking. I suppose I do find it hard to open up to people, and I can be a bit hot-headed sometimes, but am I really that unlikable? Ugh, not the nose again, please! Huh? Owen? 
First you break the cups, now you're wasting sugar. Sugar? Seriously? Aren't you even going to ask if I'm hurt? If I leave here with just a scratch, this place will be finished, you know. This place was fine until you showed up. At least, Summer, you should learn how to apologize and thank. Suddenly, the anti-fan's words echoed in my head. As Summer, Owen still saw how much of a diva I was. That means, as Sonya, I must have been so despicable. Um, I'm sorry. I should have thanked you for helping me. Hmm, that's okay. I'm glad you're not hurt. Don't forget Rena's reward at the counter. Take it before you go. Why do you have to pay others to badmouth Sonya? I'm only going along with all this for my sister, but it brings more customers in, so whatever. So the person behind this is Rena? I don't think so. Someone must be pulling her strings. But who? I don't know. Why are you so concerned, Summer? I was just curious. <laughs> I used to think badly about Owen, but beneath his cold front, he's kind of sweet and caring. Just like years ago. I was trying to escape the rain and bumped into him. He saved me from falling. Didn't care how sweaty I was and even gave me his umbrella. But in front of my crush, I was too shy and embarrassed to say anything and hurried off. Since then, I didn't feel so uncomfortable hearing the anti-fans slate me and our band's decline. It was almost all true anyway. At least this way, I could learn from my past mistakes and become a way better person. Flowers grow in the strangest of places, right? Yeah. These anti-fans actually became my friends. Playing with them was way more fun than with the berries somehow. Okay guys, you need to share your music with the world. So, I signed up our budding band for a local music competition. Well, what? But we're not professionals. Do you really think we can win? Who cares? I always wanted to perform on a big stage. But what are we gonna play? Use one of my songs if you want. I hear the payout is pretty good. Ooh, I love your songs. We practiced together every night, and everyone was so focused on this, they didn't post bad rumors about me anymore. Owen is truly a genius. Listening to him playing his intros always gave me goosebumps. And so, the image of a cute, talented Owen reappeared in my mind. Oh no, wake up, Sonya, you already have a boyfriend! Eric? Speaking of Eric, he's been ignoring all of my calls. I get it, he's busy rehearsing for the show, but didn't he promise to find a way to bring me back? Oh! I see! You're too busy playing bands to post anything! We have a show this weekend! You started this, didn't you, Summer? I knew you were trouble from the beginning! Get out of here! I'm on her side. Are you gonna kick me out too? Don't you see I'm doing this for you? Did you forget that Eric stole your songs and used them for his debut album? Rena, don't you think I already know what you're up to? You and that Eric guy are seeing each other, right? Doesn't he want you to spread rumors so he can replace Sonya, his current girlfriend? He says if I succeed, her place in the band will be mine. An affair is one thing, but he can't help you shine with that tuneless music. That's why I need your songs! Owen, just give me a few and everything will go smoothly! At that moment, it all became clear. The only album that made a name for the Berries was actually stolen. And worse still, the person behind my plummeting career was my own boyfriend. That jerk Eric craves fame and would never let himself get caught up in a love triangle scandal. You know how important public opinion is to him. He's using you, and as soon as you give him what he wants, he'll drop you without a thought. I'm not that easily replaceable. What do you mean, Summer? I'm sorry for lying about who I really am, but not everything is fake. I wish you could feel it. Pass my words to him. I'm out. And you, Rena? That jerk doesn't deserve any of our love or trust. Even if I didn't want to go back to being the famous Sonya, I couldn't continue to be the carefree Summer either. I didn't realize they were there. They must have heard everything. You're Sonya, not Summer? All this time? You lied to us! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you or trick you. Your words made me want to change myself for the better. And your music taught and inspired me a lot. Caleb, Violet, June, I just want to be friends with you. Who wants to be your friend, you liar? I may have found out the truth about myself and Eric, but now I've lost my career, my friends, my boss, everything. I'd made such a mess of everything, and I didn't know how to fix it. I don't deserve to be Sonya, or even Summer. It must be a delivery guy. I barely had the energy to get up and open the door. Standing in front of me was... Owen? Did he come all the way here just to see me? Some... Sonya. I've been thinking a lot about your band and Eric and... I realized that this isn't your fault. You can't let Eric win. You're too talented for that. If you show everyone your true self, I just know they'll love you. Actually, there's one thing I want to confess to you. 
I used to have a crush on you in high school, but you probably didn't even know I existed. Really? That's so dumb. What do you mean? Actually, at that time I liked you too. You were so cute and shy with that beautiful voice. But when I came closer to talk to you, you just ran away. If I had been more confident and braver, maybe we could have become something different. What about now? I mean, do you still want to sing my song? It'll be an honor. Your song is always special. Owen pulled me to the competition and tenderly strapped the bass on for me. Going out there without the rest of the band seemed terrifying, but we couldn't give up. Owen was about to lead me on stage when Rena rushed over to us and grabbed my arm. Sonia, I messed up. It's true that Eric was using me, and I had been so blind to trust him that much. I've corrected the misinformation about you. I was hugging her when the rest of the anti-fans appeared. I apologized to them how I was now a better version of myself because of them. Turns out we really like Summer, so we forgive you. Now we're ready to rock the night. You can't sing with them, Sonia. That song is supposed to be the theme song in our next album. Eric! It's Owen's song, not yours. And didn't Rena tell you that I no longer give a damn about your band? I did. Seems he wasn't listening. We've published your dirty plan all over the forums, so everyone can see what a jerk you are. No, you have to come with me. Tell them you made it all up. Leave her alone. I won't let you take anything from me again. My song or my girl. She's our friend now, so excuse us. We need to get on stage and perform our song. I can't believe I'm back on stage again. Only this time, it's so much better. My bandmates are awesome, the song is amazing, and the crowd is going wild. I saw Eric shamefully disappear through the crowd. Tough luck, that's what being a big slimy liar gets you. Toward the end of the song, Owen pulled me close to him and the crowd went silent. All I could hear was the beating of my heart when he gave me the best kiss ever. I was at the fish market, busy selling some crabs to a customer, when I turned around and saw this guy stealing our fish. He quickly ran away. I grabbed a stone, aiming it at the thief. But suddenly, a guy appeared and it hit him instead. Hey, what was that? Let go of me! Shouldn't you at least apologize? I looked over and the thief was nowhere to be found. The thief's escaped! You should apologize! But the guy just frowned and huffed off. Hi, I'm Serena, and I was brought up here, in this picturesque fishing town. When I was little, I lost mom and dad to the sea, so grandma raised me. We couldn't afford school for me. Instead, I helped grandma sell fish at the market to make ends meet. But things weren't always easy. Serena, you all right? Yes, I just wish people wouldn't steal. I know. Hopefully it was an extra stinky fish that will give them a tummy ache. That's Edward, my best friend since childhood. Edward's parents are also fishermen, so we naturally bond together and grew up inseparable. Later, Edward and I were busy closing when I heard murmurs and saw Mr. Elbridge, the fishing enforcement officer. Anyone caught poaching striped bass will be given a hefty fine. What? You gotta be kidding me! Sir, it's only considered poaching if they were caught out of season, which they're not! Oh really? Do you have the legal documentation to overpower my decision? Nope. Thought as much. He's obviously abusing his power. At home, I told Grandma everything that had happened at the fish market. I know it's not fair, sweetie, but maybe one day you could study, become an amazing lawyer, and help the local fishermen. I want to help. I can tutor you if you'd like. That's brilliant. Since then, Edward stayed true to his word and tutored me. He was smart, kind, and so patient in explaining things to me. Time flies, and by the time I turned 13, I had the biggest crush on Edward, but I had no clue how he felt about me. I'll wash up. In the future, I'll always share the housework with you. What does he mean by that? Does he also have feelings for me? The next day, when Edward and I were having ice cream, some kids came in and started making fun of me. Do you know eating too much ice cream makes you fat? Oh, of course you don't, because you don't go to school. <laughs> she doesn't need to. She's still far smarter than you'll ever be. Why did you always stick up for me? Is it because you think of me as a... as a... As a little sister? I need to stop daydreaming. He doesn't have those kinds of feelings for me. Then, when I turned 17, something terrible happened. Grandma felt so sick that she passed away. At the funeral, I felt so alone with all the adults around, and Edward was nowhere to be seen. When everything was settled, Uncle Leon said he'd take me to live with his family in the city. I had to tell Edward, but when I got to his house, it was all locked up. So I quickly slid a note with my uncle's address under his door, then left for the city. As soon as we walked into the mansion, and Clara and Rachel were already there, frowning. Ugh, can you smell rotting fish? 
Ew. Uh, get yourself some perfume, please. Enough. You will make Serena feel welcome here. Please prepare a nice room and everything Serena needs. Uh-oh, not a good start. But then Uncle Leon had to go away for a business trip and asked Aunt Clara to find me a tutor as he was afraid going to school might be a shock for me. I was so excited to finally study and pursue my lawyer dream. However, all the tutors Aunt Clara found were terrible. I actually had to teach them simple sums. Meanwhile, Aunt Clara showered me with errands to run. Suddenly, I saw a blur of a dog and boy and... Smash! You idiot! How am I meant to cycle home with an injured knee? You're hearing this, Rex? How is she gonna cycle back home? S sorry I'll take you home. I accepted his offer, mainly because I didn't exactly have much choice. What's your number? Well, that was quick. Stop daydreaming. I need it in case I decide to sue you. The guy, Henry, finally quit fooling around and gave me his number. When we got to the mansion, I caught sight of a familiar figure. Edward! I limped over and looped my arms around him. Who are you? Before I could respond, Henry shrugged his shoulders, then left. Edward then told me all about the tragic events that had happened to him. My father made a bad decision to go dynamite fishing. The Coast Guard caught him, but as he tried to run away, his boat smashed into a reef. We needed to move to the city for his treatment. Luckily, I got a scholarship into college here, so I can study and also care for Dad. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to find you. That's okay, I understand. It all sounds terrible. What about you? So you live in that big mansion now? Is that guy your boyfriend? Henry? Oh, no, no. He's just good because, well, I wanted to tell you that I missed you and I love you, Serena. B but you said I'm just a sister to you. I was 13. I didn't understand my feelings back then, but I do now. Serena, not having you by my side felt so empty. Will you be my girlfriend? We started dating and having Edward by my side felt so great. I was complaining about my terrible tutors when Edward suggested he become my tutor instead. That's a great idea. You'll need to prepare an atrocious CV for my aunt to hire you. And it worked. I don't expect you to get very far with this one. She is rather dumb. What's the deal with you two? She doesn't like having me here. Halfway through the lesson, Edward got a call from the hospital asking him to pay his dad's bills ASAP before his condition worsened. I was comforting him when Rachel barged in. Serena, go get me some ice. Oh, hello there. Get out! Who's that? Rachel, my cousin. Edward seemed distracted after that. I guess he was upset about his dad. He told me to continue with my worksheet and went to the bathroom. I finished the work, but Edward still hadn't returned. Was he lost in this massive house or something? I went to look for him and was shocked to see him and Rachel happily laughing together. Hi, Serena. I was just getting some water. I ignored Edward and continued studying by myself. Are you jealous? I was just being polite. Darn it, he knew I couldn't be mad at him when he smiled at me like that. But as we continued studying, I couldn't fully shake away my uneasy feeling. But the next day, I was waiting to study with Edward when Edward won't be coming today. What? I asked her why, but she just walked off. As she left, I heard her ask the maid to bring fruits to Rachel and her new tutor. Huh? Since when did Rachel have a tutor? Sensing something was up, I sneaked over to Rachel's room and spotted Edward? Serena, what are you doing over here? Oh, is stalking your new hobby now? I looked at Edward, but he just sat still, so I ran off with blurry eyes and an aching heart. Edward tried to call me, but I just ignored it. That night, he texted me and insisted on waiting for me. I wanted to hear him out, but I was still so angry at him. Serena, please. Your aunt told me I couldn't tutor you anymore and asked me to be Rachel's tutor instead. I need the money for my dad's treatment. I can't turn this amount of money down. Ugh, my aunt was such a witch! I'm so sorry. I would much rather be tutoring you. You're the only girl for me, but I can't lose this job. So let's keep our relationship a secret, okay? This was no big deal, right? It was me he wanted, not Rachel. Edward's birthday soon arrived, and we have a date at this restaurant today. I was excited when my phone buzzed. Sorry, babe. Something's come up. Can't make it. X. It must have been something super important for him to cancel like that. But on my way home, I passed another restaurant and couldn't believe my eyes. Edward and Rachel were sitting together. Rage swarmed over me, and before I could stop myself, I charged in there. Edward, how could you? Jeez, what's up with you? He's not even your tutor anymore. Ask him how long he's known me for. Uh, I was just your tutor, that's all. I couldn't believe this, so I stormed off. I felt like such a fool for ever believing his lies. While running in tears, I bumped straight into... Henry. You look like you just got dumped. 
<laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so I started crying louder. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Please stop crying. Anything you want. Anything. Uh, how about the aquarium? It turns out the aquarium was just what I needed. Watching the fish was so relaxing, and Henry was surprisingly a lot of fun to be around. Your parents must be super easygoing to put up with you. Nope, my lawyer mom is way opposite. Oh wow, that's cool. It's my dream to be a lawyer. Is that so? My school's interviewing for a law foundation course. You should apply. A law foundation course, huh? Should I give it a try? I arrived home feeling better, but Aunt Clara wouldn't leave me alone with her usual mocking routines. You spoiled ingrate! Soon you'll be 18 and I can rid my hands of you! I had enough! So I decided to apply for the foundation program Henry mentioned. It was time to focus on my dream without any further distractions. I studied hard and went to the library for materials. Henry offered to help and even though I still found him childish sometimes, he was actually quite smart and knew loads about the law. One time, Henry invited me to come watch his debate team. Only when I showed up and spoke to Henry, I saw Edward walk in. My dad's ill, yet here you are with him? Serena can go where she pleases. It's okay, Henry. I got it. Rachel's just my friend. I love you, not her. I just need to earn enough money. Then I'll end this mess with Rachel for good. What he did was still hard to accept, but he was in a tough situation. I would be a terrible girlfriend if I didn't support him, right? Despite all this drama, I'd been studying hard, and now it was time for my interview. Only, on my way there, I saw a woman yelling at two students. Watch where you're going, you idiots! Excuse me, but this is a pedestrian crossing, hence the driver's fault for not stopping. How dare you speak the law to me, you little girl! Do you know who I am? But as everyone started buzzing, she had no choice but to drive off. <sighs> what happened? I explained it to him and pointed at the woman's car. He didn't say anything, but seemed quite surprised. We then went to the interview, but when I told the assistant my name, she smiled and said, You don't need to draw a number. Mrs. Shodden was impressed with your profile, so she wishes to interview you herself. It's best you follow the right procedure. I was a bit confused, but Henry knew better than me. Anyway, I had my interview with someone else, and I passed. Yay! Since then, I studied hard, and Henry helped me a lot. On my first oral exam, he even came along to encourage me. Only, as soon as I stepped into the room, I saw that rude woman standing there. Hang on, she's the judge! Nerves wriggled at me, but I kept calm and nailed the exam. But afterward, she charged over to me. Don't expect to pass from me, you manipulative girl, seducing my son to get into this college. Huh? Her son? Who? Mom, you can't do that. The exam's recorded. They'll see you're just being prejudiced. I insist you cut ties with a schemer at once. She humiliated me in front of a crowd and tried to smudge my impeccable reputation. No, she didn't. She was just telling the truth. Oh, and that day, I purposely called her in for an interview, but turned out you intervened. And ever since then, this snake was following you everywhere. So end it at once or leave. So this woman is Miss Shodden? And worse still, she's Henry's mom? Suddenly, Henry grabbed my hand and led me out of there. How dare you! You're ungrateful and spoiled! I only adopted you so I had someone to look after me in my old age. But you know what? You'll never be my son! Don't forget to take your meds twice a day. Seeing him talk back to his mother just to defend me, I couldn't help but ask, Henry, why did you help me so much? It's because mom was in the wrong, and seeing you getting pushed around hurts me a lot. Why, Henry? Because I like you a lot. Let me be there for you. Um, Henry, your mom shouldn't have spoken to you like that, but she was only angry because she cares about you. You should talk to her. I really hope things will turn out fine between them. Henry dropped me home, and now all I could think about was his love confession. To be honest, I do have feelings for Henry, but what about Edward? What about our years spent together? Suddenly, I got a text from Edward, asking to meet up. I guess it was time to sort this out. While waiting for Edward to order ice cream, I got a message from Henry, saying he was coming to my place for some great news. I asked him to come pick me up instead. This reminds me of our fishing village in summer and getting ice creams at the end of a sweltering day. I love you, Serena. I always cherish our memories together every day. Edward, actually, this isn't working. I think we should stop seeing each other. W what? Why? I soon realized that something was wrong with our relationship. I just didn't have the courage to face it. We had a special friendship that I cherished and nurtured, but now I think it's time for me to accept the truth that we're not meant for each other. Bye, Edward. I wish you the best with Rachel. As I stepped out of there, I saw Henry waiting for me, and I instantly felt better. I made up with my mom. She apologized for what she said in her temper. 
and told me that I would always be her real son. Henry, that's brilliant news! Right then, I got a message from Miss Shaden. Serena, I apologized for my behavior. I am most pleased Henry is getting to know such a righteous lawyer in the making. It looks like everything's falling into place. I arrived home, not expecting to see Rachel in a fit of tears. Mom, make her leave! This is all her fault! How dare you bewitch Edward! He's quit tutoring Rachel, and now my poor Rachel is distraught! I will keep on hiring you awful tutors and see how long it takes until you break. Ahem, <laughs> is that so? So Uncle Leon stopped Rachel's allowance and took Aunt Clara's credit cards off her. He also made them apologize to me. I told him about my foundation placement and he was so happy for me and offered to rent me an apartment near the college. It's time to live my dream. Now I just had one thing left to do. Take Henry to visit my hometown with me. This place looks familiar to me. <gasps> I know, I think I came here as a child. Yes, this weird little girl threw a stone at me and then got mad. I suddenly realized Henry was that tourist guy I met when I was 10. Yep, that would be me. Henry seemed surprised, then suddenly pulled me in. I guess some things are just meant to be. Would you ever let yourself become so wrapped up in hatred that you change your entire life to get revenge on someone? Well, that's exactly what I did, and it didn't exactly go to plan. I'm Clara, and I'm 25 years old. It all started five years ago when my boyfriend Jason went to study abroad in France. We were so in love at that time, and it wasn't easy being apart, but we coped surprisingly well. Jason even promised me we'd get married when he got back. But after a few short months of him being away, he started growing distant. He no longer called me every day, and he barely even replied to my texts. I thought maybe he was just too busy and stressful to deal with his new life while struggling with missing me. So I decided to do something wild and fly to Paris to surprise him on his upcoming birthday. I hadn't really thought about it, I just excitedly got on the flight and taken a taxi to his apartment. But, well, the moment I saw him walking into the lobby, I instantly regretted it. There Jason was, but he wasn't alone. He was hugging and kissing some other girl, and she even went upstairs with him. I felt my blood boil, and I wanted to scream, but instead, I just left. I was so upset, but I was also angry. How could he betray me like that? Going a long way just to see my boyfriend betraying me right in front of my eyes was a bad thing, and I didn't think life could get any worse. But I was wrong. Things were about to get much worse. After leaving his place, I booked myself into a nearby hostel and cried myself to sleep. The next moment, I was waking up to a burning smell. Oh God. The hostel was on fire! I was lucky to make it out of there alive, but I was badly burned and left with a huge scar on my face. There I was, heartbroken and burnt to a crisp in a foreign country where I knew no one and didn't speak the language. I'd never been so lonely and ugly in my life. As I looked in the mirror, all I felt was anger and resentment towards Jason. He destroyed my life, and at all costs, I would make him pay for it. After I'd recovered, I got on the plane and flew back to the USA. That's when I started plotting my revenge. I had a few things up my sleeve, but first things first. Plastic surgery. So, as soon as I graduated, I got myself a full face rework. I even changed my name, moved to a new apartment, and lived with a new identity. My life was miserable enough, so now all I wanted was to start all over again. And it worked. After the surgery, I turned into a completely different person, just like I'd wanted. And what's more, I was even more beautiful than before the accident. I felt incredible and couldn't wait to start living again. Of course, I had to work my ass off to pay off my plastic surgery, but it was worth it, wasn't it? More than that, that was also how I tried my best to build a career for myself. Jason would regret cheating on me for the rest of his life, that's for sure. And as planned, after three years of working hard, I eventually got promoted to a management position in the construction company I worked for. 
and became a beautiful, successful woman that many people admired. At the same time, a few of my friends mentioned that Jason had finally returned from Paris and was now working for a big architectural firm. I almost laughed when I heard the company's name. That was our new partner company. Oh, things were about to get fun. My friends also told me that he'd brought his French girlfriend back to the USA with him and that they were getting married soon. What? He was about to get married? They seemed so happy together, huh? No wonder that for all these years, he hadn't tried to contact me once. After I caught him cheating, I just disappeared. I could have been dead for all he knew. But he didn't seem to care. This made me hate him even more. There was no way a traitor could live happily like that. I couldn't wait any longer. It was time to put my plan into action. So I told my boss I'd work on the project with Jason's firm. At least this way, I'd have an excuse to approach him. At that first meeting, I made sure I looked as beautiful as possible and waited with bated breath. Of course, Jason didn't recognize me. And well, 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 would you believe it? He kept looking at me and flirting with me. I found it hilarious and so kept flirting back. And eventually he got the hint and asked me out. What a jerk! Now I understood why I was abandoned in the past. Even when he already had his fiance, he could still flirt leisurely with others. His poor fiance. I kept playing along and even made plans to befriend his fiance, Valerie. I knew she hung out in a certain cafe, so one day I went there and accidentally bumped into her, dropping water all over her gorgeous outfit. I kept apologizing and told her I'd pay to get it dry cleaned, and eventually we started chatting and hit it off. We exchanged numbers, and I asked if she'd like to go shopping sometime, which she agreed to. This was way too easy. A few days later, we went shopping, and it didn't take long before she started confiding in me about how lonely she was, and that other than her boyfriend, she didn't know anyone here. I smiled sweetly and told her I'd happily be her best friend. At the same time, Jason and I were dating. I pretended to fall for him, even though inside, I was furious at him. I even told him I'd share some confidential work documents with him if he pampered me and treated me like a princess. He seemed totally in love with me and spent all his spare time taking me out to dinner and buying me expensive gifts. It seemed like he was no longer interested in Valerie. Obviously, Valerie came to me and told me that she was very sad because the wedding was coming soon, but her fiancé was just cold and acting weird. On the one hand, I comforted and encouraged her, but on the other hand, I seduced Jason and took most of his money. He'd even put my name on the house contract, so technically, I owned his place. You know, I wanted Jason to feel the pain of being betrayed by the person he trusted. Then one day, Valerie called me in tears and said she suspected her boyfriend was seeing someone else. I asked her what her boyfriend's name was and where he worked and said she didn't need to worry. I'd help her find out. A few days later, I sent Valerie a few photos of him cheating with me, but obviously I hid my face. However, it was just enough evidence to make her suffer. Then I told Valerie that it looked like her boyfriend was working with this other girl on a project and that Valerie could get her revenge by destroying the project. That way, he wouldn't be able to work with this other girl anymore. Valerie totally fell for it. It was insane. The very next day, I heard from my colleagues that Jason's crazy fiance had destroyed the final layout for the design of the two companies' project. She spilled water on his laptop and threw it onto the ground. While the deadline was coming, it was too late to start it over. Apparently, Jason's boss was fuming and fired him immediately. This contract was worth millions of dollars, and he just ruined everything. I had to give it to Valerie. She didn't even think about it. That's how dumb she was. <laughs> Serve Jason right. Finally, karma had come and bitten him in the ass. That evening, I went over to their house. Jason now has no job, no money, and he was about to lose his fiance and his house, too. I knocked on the door, and when Valerie opened it, she was shocked to see me, but not as shocked as she was about to become. Jason saw me and looked like he was going to pass out. Surprise! 
I said. Hi, Jason. At this, Valerie looked confused and said, Wait, do you two know each other? I just laughed and said, We sure do, Valerie. In fact, I'm the other woman who he is cheating on you with. And that's not all. I'm actually Jason's ex. Then I turned to Jason. That's right, Jason. It's me, Clara. Valerie, when he came to Paris, he was dating me, and then he cheated on me with you, so I've been getting my sweet revenge. Both of them looked completely stunned, and instead of shouting at me, they started fighting with each other. Valerie was screaming. How could you? Jason shouted back. You're crazy! If you hadn't ruined my laptop, things wouldn't have been like this. Oh, really? If you hadn't cheated on me, I wouldn't have done that, Valerie said, while bursting out crying. Pretty soon, she found out that the house belonged to me now, and all of his money, and that's when all hell broke loose. I just stood there, admiring how great my revenge had played out. Eventually, they broke up with each other and I decided to kick them out of the house. So my cherished revenge plan for the past few years has been successful. However, there was just one problem. The price I paid for it wasn't small. When I showed up at work the next day, everyone was whispering about me, saying the project I'd been working on had been a complete failure, and that it was all because I seduced the guy from our partner firm, even when he was about to marry his fiance. It was a disaster. My reputation was ruined. I couldn't handle everyone being against me, so I resigned. I decided to spend some time at home for a while, trying to clear my head. I didn't get it. I'd spent years plotting my revenge, and now that it had finally been a success, why did I feel so bad? I'd been so caught up in ruining Jason's life. I hadn't thought how it would affect my life too. I'd been delusional. Above all, the joy and satiety of watching the two of them move out of the house was just temporary, and what remained after that was just a feeling of emptiness. What had I been doing? I was just ruining people's lives, especially with Valerie. She was so innocent in all of this. How could I have been so cruel? Then one day, as I was walking down the street, I saw her at the bus stop, and she looked so sad and thin, and it tormented me. That poor girl didn't deserve this. I couldn't just stand there and do nothing. I had to apologize, so I raced across the street. But by the time I got there, the bus had come, and she had gone. I decided to call her instead. I asked if we could talk, and at first, she refused. But once I said sorry, and told her how terrible I felt about everything, she agreed to meet me. I was holding the keys to her old house, and as she walked towards me, I handed them over. She was surprised, but then I started to explain. Valerie, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hurt you. It's just that Jason broke my heart, and for years all I thought about was destroying his life the way he destroyed mine. I didn't realize you were so sweet, and now I see how awful I was to you. You don't deserve any of this. You trusted me, and I completely betrayed you. At first, Valerie didn't say anything. Then she started shouting at me, saying she'd thought of me as her best friend and that she felt so pathetic for trusting me. At this point, I burst into tears. I was a monster. The minute I started crying, something changed in Valerie. She hugged me. I couldn't believe it. After everything I'd done to her, she still wanted to hug me. We were there hugging and crying and, yep, Finally, something good had come out of all this mess. I had a friend, and very quickly, this friend will become my best friend for sure. You guys, honestly, I don't recommend wasting your time on revenge. I threw away so many years of my life obsessing over hurting Jason, and in the end, it just hurt me and poor innocent Valerie. From my own experience, I just want to tell you that always be the bigger person and live for yourself, not for others. Hi, I'm Ella, and I'm 17. Have you ever been brave enough to change the things that you were too familiar with? If yes, did you encounter any difficulties? Well, for me, yeah. It's more than just changes. 
and this is the story of what happened to me last summer. And it's really crazy, so brace yourself. So, I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. When I say small, I mean it. It only had a population of 85 people. There was just one gas station, two small parks, one grocery store, and, oh yeah, only one school. Including me, there were only seven kids in my grade. That's right, seven people. And my grade was one of the biggest ones. From when I was five years old to the time I was 15, I spent most of my time with the same six classmates. After being with them for many years, most of them really started to get on my nerves. Well, apart from Rosie. Rosie and I became BFFs in third grade. Some other kids were teasing me about my red hair and told me that I looked like a tomato. But then Rosie appeared by my side and told them to back off. From then on, we became best friends and were pretty much inseparable. My life was good. I felt safe in my little town where everyone knew each other. In a city, there were way too many people for my liking and too much pressure to be popular. And I didn't want that. I knew a small town life was the life for me. But then, when I was 16, everything changed. On one Saturday afternoon, I was at Rosie's house watching a movie when my parents called me and told me to come home at once. I thought this was kind of weird because my parents didn't usually call me to come home until it was late at night. And right now it was only 4.30 p.m. What did they need me to come home for? I arrived home to find Jake, my brother, crying. I bursted out loud. What happened? What was going on? Seeing me totally in shock, my dad said, Ella, we have some news. What news was bad enough to make my brother, who wasn't the emotional type, cry? Did someone have a serious illness? Had someone died? Oh no. Had my beloved dog Sally died? Then he said, Ella, I've been offered a job in New York City. What? I yelled. And he's taking it. This is an amazing opportunity for us all. And moving out of this town will be good for us. It'll be a great adventure mom said. New York? The biggest city in the entire country? No, I couldn't move there. I didn't want a new adventure. I was perfectly happy where we live now, and I didn't want to leave. But however much I sulked, shouted, or pleaded with my parents to stay, their minds were made up, and we were moving. Telling Rosie was horrible. She got so upset, and I felt awful about it. I didn't want to leave her, but what choice did I have? I spent my last day in town with her. We ate pizza, watched our favorite movies, played our favorite video games, and things like that. When it was time for me to leave, I gave her my unicorn plushie to remember me by. Then we cried into each other's arms and we promised to text each other every single day. So, I left the safety of my little town and moved to the city. Our new house was much smaller than my old one, but at least we could keep Sally. On my first day of school, I was terrified. There were so many people and I didn't know where I was meant to go or what I was meant to do. Luckily, the kids there were actually really nice. This one girl showed me where my locker was and some other kids let me sit with them at lunchtime. After only a few weeks of living in New York, I started to find my bearings. I even figured out how to navigate the underground. I made some pretty great friends, but this didn't change the fact that Rosie was still my BFF. I texted her every day, and sometimes we spent hours on the phone with each other. A month of city life passed, and I got talking to this boy in my English class called Alex. He had the most amazing blonde hair, and his eyes, they were blue like the sky and the ocean and a swimming pool and, yeah, if you couldn't tell, I really liked Alex. Not only was he unbelievably cute, but he was also kind and funny. We bonded over our love of video games and dogs and soon became pretty close. Then one day, he invited me over to his apartment to hang out. Then over a giant pizza and a movie, he told me he liked me and asked me to be his girlfriend. I instantly said yes! I was so excited and couldn't wait to tell Rosie, but she didn't seem all that thrilled about it. For a few months, everything was perfect for me. School life was great, and I had some awesome friends and an amazing boyfriend. 
Sadly, though, Rosie and I grew further apart. I barely had time to talk to her hours on the phone every night. It was like our timeline became different. She always called when I was busy, and when I texted her back, she wasn't there. I know that she always cared about me, but my busy life just carried me away. I told myself this was okay as things change. People get different friends. Though not as often as before, Rosie and I still chatted whenever we had a chance. One time I told her that I would be going out with Alex at a fancy restaurant the next day. Anytime I mentioned Alex, she seemed not cool with it. But that time she expressed her excitement and asked me a lot about our date. That made me feel so good. When the day came, I went to meet Alex at the restaurant that he had booked for us. I entered and waited for about 20 minutes for him to show. I began to get impatient and asked a waiter if he'd seen a boy with blonde hair and blue eyes come in at all. The waiter told me he had, but he'd left with a tall girl with long brown hair and brown eyes. What? Who was the girl he left with? And why? I thought of everyone I knew who fit that description. I couldn't think of anyone. Except for Rosie. But she lived in Pennsylvania. Why would she be here talking to my boyfriend? I decided to call Alex, but he sounded muffled and I heard a girl talking in the background. It sounded like they were arguing and then the call ended. This was so weird. What happened? I had no idea what was going on, so I headed home. On my way, I felt like someone was following me. And then I realized that there was one car driving very slowly after me. When I tried stopping, it also stopped. Oh my god. Was it having anything to do with me? I felt terrified and started to run as quick as I could until I reached my house. I turned back and saw that car parked outside my house. I was shaking as I tried to open the door. And as I did, Sally zoomed past me and ran toward the car. I had only seen her act that way whenever Alex came over. She really liked Alex. Wait, Alex? That was it. Alex was in that car. Was it a prank? I ran over to see what the heck was going on. There, sitting in the driver's seat, was Rosie. And to my complete shock, Alex was tied up in the back seat. Rosie! I screamed. What are you doing here in New York with my boyfriend? Alex screamed, Help! She told me you were waiting for me in her car, then she kidnapped me. Rosie quickly turned around and looked me right in the face. Oh, um... Hi, Ella. What are you doing with my boyfriend? He's not a good guy for you, Ella. I need you to break up with him now or else I will drive away so you can never find him ever. Are you crazy? We will not break up just because you demand me to do that. Now let him go. I walked around to the passenger door to get Alex, but then the car started moving fast. I ran after the car, but I was too slow. But Sally ran after it too, and she didn't stop. She almost got hit by cars as she ran through traffic until she was out of sight. I was so scared. I was about to call the cops when I saw a police car zoom past me. How did they know about this already? Who called 911? I looked back and saw my mom standing outside with the phone waving at me nervously. She had seen all the commotion and called the cops. Thanks, Mom. There was nothing I could do now except wait. It was awful. I was so anxious. About an hour later, a cop car pulled up to our house. The cop stepped out and opened the back door, and out came Sally. I ran up to the police car and hugged Sally. She was safe, but what about Alex? The officer told me that they'd chased the car for almost two miles until they cornered it on a dead-end street. He said that Rosie was very fierce and tried resisting arrest, but they'd taken her to the station. To my relief, Alex was fine, and they dropped him back home. Phew. I just didn't understand it. Rosie was my best friend. Why would she try to seriously harm my boyfriend? I later found out that Rosie was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. It's a disorder that causes people to go through extreme mood swings and do things that are out of character and crazy. Rosie had a lot going on. As well as me not being around anymore, her dad had moved out. I didn't know this as she hadn't told me. Back then, I wasn't talking all that much to her, but I'd never expected that the separation Rosie felt was too much for her and could lead her to bipolar disorder. I was her only one at that time, so she wanted her to be my only one too. But Alex appeared and made her feel insecure and seriously jealous. It is fortunate there are no serious consequences. 
I really hope Rosie gets the proper treatment for her disorder. We might not be as close anymore, but in my eyes, she'll always be the girl who was there for me when I was being teased. And I will always regret that I wasn't there to listen to her more when she needed me. I still feel sad about it all, but I'm trying to see the positives. Things with Alex are going great, and I'm happy here. It turns out city life is for me after all. Whether it's in friendship or love, people still need their own space. And sometimes, as sad as it is, people do grow apart. This happens in life. Being overjealous doesn't help mend things. It just pushes the other person further away. Hey, my name is Erin, and as you can see, I'm just your normal 18-year-old college girl. But my friends who know me well know that I'm not a girly girl. If given the choice of a shopping trip or beer pong, well, <laughs> then there's no contest. All through high school, I was known as the prank queen. One time, this girl teased me about my sneakers, so I put a real-life spider in her lunchbox. She totally freaked out. It was so funny. Another time, my teacher gave me a totally unjust C on my essay. So when she wasn't looking, I placed her coffee mug upside down. As soon as she picked up the mug, coffee spilled all over the table and her clothes. I ended up with a week's worth of detention for that, but it was so worth it. So yeah, even though I was out of high school now, my mischievous nature wasn't going anywhere. I didn't even feel like I needed to change or be more mature because my life was still going perfect. I always had my longtime boyfriend, Zach, and my bestie, Jace, on my side. We went to the same college together. Me and Jace even moved out to live independently. Trust me, college life was worth 12 years of waiting. I'm a sociable and active girl, while Zach is pretty handsome and great at sports. So we soon became a popular and beloved couple at college. We were even given prom king and prom queen crowns for freshmen. I could see people admired us any time we were together. It was like our love was a typical relationship that they always wished for. Only I knew that deep down inside, Zach's feelings for me were changing. We seemed to argue all the time, and at the root of it was the fact that I wasn't gentle like most other girls. Ugh. He used to see me as the most interesting and attractive girl in the world. What happened? Once, he took me to a party to celebrate his basketball team's win. We cheered a lot, and at a point I was so excited that I jumped on the table and drank wine with the boys. Everyone around was cheering with joy, but Zach wasn't happy. Then later, when I was getting in his car ready for him to drive me home, I asked him, What's wrong? Aren't you happy you won? He replied, You're an embarrassment. No one else's girlfriend was down in wine and cheering at the top of their voice. Why can't you just be gentle, like your friend Jace? I was fuming. So fuming, in fact, that I got out of his car, slammed the door shut, and walked home. It was such an outrage comparing me with another girl. Not to mention that Jace is the complete opposite of me. She's super quiet and introverted. You know what they say, opposites attract. This is so true, as Jace and I are the best of friends. But there's no way I could be gentle like her. If he wanted me to be more like her, why didn't he consider himself to be as sweet and smart as her boyfriend, Jay? I arrived home to find Jace sitting in tears on her bed. Oh, my gentle, weak girl. That night must be Black Friday for both of us. So I hugged her and asked her what was wrong. She replied, Jay's changed, Aaron. He doesn't like my meekness and wants a more vibrant relationship. In fact, he wants me to be more like you. He said I should be active and strong like you are. Now I don't know what to do. I said, oh, God, boys are so confusing. You know what? Zach said the same thing to me. He wants me to be gentle like you. Jace looked at me with surprising eyes. Really? He did? I know, so hilarious, right? We have to do something to make them realize our true value. Hmm, but what can we do? And once again, my prank-minded brain came up with an extraordinary idea. And I told her, 
I know, Jace. We can swap boyfriends. No, Aaron, I don't like Zach. And from when you have eyes for Jay. Hey, don't get it wrong. I just want my Zach. So here's the plan. We will annoy our boyfriends so they won't want to hang out with us for a few days. Then we'll take this time to strike and flirt with each other's boyfriends. Then, just when they thought they're getting close to us, we'll be super annoying. Then they'll realize just how amazing their actual girlfriends are. Ugh, <sighs> talk about an amazing plan, huh? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Jace was hesitant at first, but she eventually came up with my prank. As usual, our boys would soon come back as their old selves. I put my part of the plan into action by asking Zach over to watch the new episode of his favorite show on Netflix. Then, during the show, I ate popcorn really loudly, then continued to make comments and laugh while he was trying to concentrate. Eventually, he snapped and said, Are you crazy? I'm trying to watch this. I replied, What? You can't stand me anymore or something? We argued a little bit, then he said, You know what? You're annoying. Why can't you be nice, delicate, and gentle for just a moment? Then he stormed out of the room and left. I immediately texted Jace. Mission completed. As for Jace, she went out with Jay. But whenever he asked her what she wanted to do or eat, etc., she replied, whatever, to everything. It soon drove him crazy because he didn't know what to do to please her. That was classic. When Jace kept shaking her head when he gave her options for what to eat, he got furious and drove her straight home. OMG, I couldn't stop laughing. So the first step was successful. Next, we needed to approach each other's boyfriends. A couple of days later, I found an excuse to meet Jay. He was a computer genius, so I messaged him on Facebook. Hi Jay, you know a lot about computers, right? Can you help me, as my laptop won't connect to the Wi-Fi and I have an assignment due? Then he replied, Um, sure. Just take a picture of it and send it over. So I replied, Can I bring it to your place? You gotta help me. I don't know what to do. Well then, of course, he said yes. So I wore a cute outfit and went over there. I kept touching his arm and praising him. Then... When he became more open to me, I started to tell him how lonely and empty I was, as Zach and I were over. Oh yeah? How come? He raised an eyebrow. I sighed out. <sighs> he thinks I'm too loud and boisterous. I tried to fake my tears. Am I annoying, Jay? He was surprised. No, you're not. You're an active, outgoing, and interesting girl. Don't let his judgment bother you. Ha! <laughs> so my tears worked. So I just pretended to cry harder. He frantically said he knew how to cheer me up. Then he took me to the amusement park. I laughed loudly in the middle of the roller coaster queue, let my ice cream smudge my face, and intentionally didn't wipe it clean. Then I demanded he win me a teddy on the beanbag throwing stall game. But every time he threw the beanbag, I shouted out and clung onto his arm. I knew boys hate being stuck and nagging all day. Like, really, really hate it. Soon, he would realize how awesome Jace was. Talking about Jace, she came to find Zach at the gym, but pretended like it was just a chance meeting. She asked him to show her how a treadmill worked, then used the same way as mine for Zach to ask her out. They went to the cinema to cheer her up. She refused to see the action film he was longing to see, as it was too noisy said no to any movie he suggested, then eventually ended up in a chick flick. But right at the climax of the film, she complained it was too dark and crowded in there and made him leave early. How ridiculous! LOL! He must be so annoyed. Then I told her to hit Zach where it hurt, his basketball match. Jace convinced him to take her along to his game but she just sat there scrolling through her phone instead of watching the match. She didn't cheer him when he won a point, and immediately after the game finished, she asked him to take her home, causing him to miss the post-game gathering. Good work, Jace. He'd come running back to me in no time. I know you're probably thinking this plan was crazy, but it really worked. Jay showed up on our doorstep with flowers for Jace. Their love story had been given the refreshment it needed.
Now, I just had to wait for Zack to realize what he's been missing. Only, to my horror, Zack wasn't messaging me. He was still messaging Jace. She ended up sending a picture of her with Jay and told him she was happy with her boyfriend and didn't have time for annoying people like him. Then, the next day, Jace arrived home all flustered. She told me that Zack had been waiting for her outside of her class, then told her he wanted a chance to take her on a date. What? He was technically still my boyfriend. How could he do this to me? Worse still, he was ignoring all of my messages. So I showed up at his house and wouldn't budge until he answered the door. He looked sheepish as he said, Aaron, our relationship hit a dead end. You're acting ridiculous, and I know you hung out with another guy behind my back. Meanwhile, a wonderful girl came to see me play basketball instead of you. She's the girl for me, not you. At this point, I had to say the truth. Zach, you don't know what you're talking about right now. Listen, it was all just a setup so you could see what you were missing. It's worked for Jace. Her relationship is stronger than ever. And to my surprise, he replied, I know. I overheard you discussing it with Jace in the library. At first, I found you so cute because you were trying to save our love. And I just wanted to please you, so I pretended not to know. But then, I realized something. I don't love you anymore. Instead, I love Jace. And thinking about it, I guess I have for a while. She's like a little, arrogant cat that I want to pamper and take care of. You know, I've always liked cats. What? She's not even arrogant. She only acted that way as part of the plan. I shouted. I don't care. All I know is I love her, not you. Ugh! I can't believe it. What have I done? Because of my stupid prank, I've lost my boyfriend to my best friend. What am I meant to do now? Hey, it's me, Erin again. I'm here to tell you the concluding part of my story. So I came up with a genius idea to swap boyfriends with my bestie, Jace and mess things up to make our current boyfriends appreciate us more. Only, my plan backfired massively when my boyfriend Zach decided he loved Jace, not me. Standing on Zach's doorstep having him tell me he didn't love me anymore was so humiliating, especially as a bunch of college kids were hanging out nearby and could hear everything. I yelled at him. We've been together for three years. Doesn't that mean anything to you? He replied, I know, and we've had some great times together, but we've grown apart. Besides, I know Jace loves me too. Geez, Zack, she doesn't. It was all part of the plan. Nah, before all that, she told me she was tired of Jay, and she really loves me. But she couldn't do that to you, or to Jay. What? Unbelievable! I made this plan work for her, but all along... She'd been playing me and my boyfriend. She'd ruined my relationship behind my back and been fake to me all this time? Now she was playing happily ever after with Jay while my boyfriend was pining after her. I stormed out of there, but going home was the last place I wanted to be, so I ended up at the park. I sat there thinking things through. I couldn't just leave things like this. Both Zack and Jay needed to know about Jace's true face. Fueled by my anger and humiliation, I rushed off to find Jay. Then I told him everything. He looked completely shocked as I told him how the plan backfired, as now Jace has feelings for Zack and was just using him. I expected him to get upset or something, but instead, he just looked angry and shouted at me, Erin! You're such a bad friend. I've always loved Jace, and I know she loves me too. Stop trying to wreck other people's happiness because your own love life sucks. I stood there, speechless, then watched as he walked off. O-M-G. That did not go as expected. Is that all people thought of me? That I was some bitter, jealous jerk? 
all I tried to do was save Jason Jay's relationship. And it worked, didn't it? But now, I didn't know what was going on anymore. Sighing, I realized that I was wrong to confront Jay without talking to Jace first. For all I knew, Zack could have been lying. I mean, the guy was completely delusional. It just hurt so much that he didn't love me anymore. Instead, he loved my best friend. As much as this sucked, I knew I was wrong to blame Jace for this before hearing her out. Maybe Jay was right. I was a bad friend. I wanted to find Jace, but Jay must have got to her first, as she was never in our room anymore. Then, a friend of ours told me Jace had moved back home. OMG, she'd moved out and not even told me. I tried catching up with her after classes, but she avoided me at all costs. Ugh, this sucked. I'd had enough of this. So one day, I stopped her at the classroom door and said, We need to talk. She tried to walk away, so I grabbed her arm. But she replied, There's nothing to talk about. How could she act so flippant when she had everything and I was left with nothing? So I shouted at her, Excuse me, you ruined our plan? Now you have everything. You have your boyfriend back, and my boyfriend wants you, not me. Not only do they both now hate me, but you moved out without even telling me. Like an ending for our friendship? I know I didn't handle things that well, and I'm sorry for that. But I was hurting, Jace. And you, you've been the worst. So stop being so selfish and fix it up. Everyone was gawping at us, and Jace started blushing. Then she hissed at me. Let's talk about it later. Not here. This only made me angrier, as I knew she had absolutely no intention of actually talking to me. Raging, I yanked back her ponytail. She yelped out, What are you doing? Get off! Then who should appear but Zack? Ugh! He pulled me off her, then hugged her. Then he shouted at me, When will you grow up and think about your words and behavior? I was shocked. Now he was on her side. Jeez. This guy had ditched me for my best friend. What was he expecting from me? Sunshine and unicorns? Suddenly, Jay appeared and saw Zack hugging Jace. Shocked, he said. What's going on here? Jace, is this real? You and him? So what Aaron said was true all along? Jace moved away from Zack and said, Jay, I'm sorry. It wasn't meant to be like this. He gave a nod of his head, then replied, I trusted you, but it seems like it's not worth it. After that, he left. Jace looked really confused and embarrassed, which, I'm not gonna lie, made me feel a little bit satisfied. Also, Zack was not a fool and got angry about how she'd moved away from him. I left them to their heated discussion and went into class. Good. Now her love life was a mess, and it was my turn to fix mine. I had to bring Zack back to me on my own. No one could help me now. So one day, at his basketball match with another school's team, I asked the cheerleader team to let me in the rooster mascot suit. It was so stuffy in there, but it'd be worth it, right? I would surprise him by running to hug him and celebrate when the team wins. He would definitely be touched and see that I'm always by his side cheering and watching him. So as planned, I ran down to embrace Zack as he scored the winning shot for the team. I tried to kiss him, but I forgot that I was in the form of a rooster. This made all the audience laugh. Zack tried to run away, but I chased after him and I stumbled. The rooster head fell off and everyone saw me. This time, the laughter and screams were even louder, but I just saw Zack looking at me with embarrassed and disappointed eyes. Talk about humiliating. Worse still, he didn't even help me up, just shook his head, then walked off. At that moment, I just wanted to melt into the ground, but then Jay rushed over and helped me to my feet. Jay drove me home, and he said, Why did you have to embarrass yourself like that? And for a person who doesn't deserve you? I replied, he's my boyfriend. He isn't anymore. I know it hurts like crazy, Aaron. But sometimes, 
We need to let go of things that no longer belong to us. Don't lose your self-worth for unworthy things. I looked up at him with teary eyes. So, you don't want Jace back? Nah. She's made it pretty clear that she wants him. Not me. And I'm not going to be second best to anyone. Besides, she lied to me. And I'm not about that. I guess you're right. I sighed. It just hurts so much. Heron, you're a strong girl. You'll get through this. But please promise me one thing, though. No more crazy ideas to try and win him back. I know, I know. I managed a laugh. When I got home, I thought about what Jay said. I guess he had a point. No matter how hard I tried to pull Zack back, he still turned away from me. And the same with Jace. I tried to fix things with her and only ended up making everything worse. Thinking about it, Zack wasn't right for me. He wanted me to change who I was just to fit in with his life better. That wasn't right. I wanted a boyfriend who was proud of being seen with me, not embarrassed. And for Jace, she'd lied to me, and then she hadn't even respected me enough to talk to me before moving out. She wasn't a true friend. I knew that now. As the weeks passed, I finally got over everything. About Jace and Zach, I still see them around campus, but we don't talk. I heard they are a couple now, but the boys in the basketball club don't like her very much because she never lets Zach go out after matches with them. She also never dances and cheers happily for their victory. Well, that's not my problem now anyway. Ha! Huh. As for Jay and I, we're getting closer. I guess we bonded over our broken hearts. Also, it turns out, we're far more similar than we realized. We started to hang out more, and then yesterday I suggested that we should go to the amusement park. His face was serious for a second, but then we both burst into laughter. I apologized to him for being ridiculous before, and he said, Never mind. I love your positive vibes. I smiled happily and said, Don't worry. This time I won't distract you while you're trying to win me a teddy. Then we both laughed. We're not officially a couple yet, but I can feel something between us. But there's no rush. I'm living in the moment, and it's pretty darn great. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have an amusement park to get to. Hey, Sally here. I'm 25 years old, and I love makeup. I mean, I really love it. I don't even answer the door barefaced to the postman. My fascination with makeup started back when I was just a little kid. My mom was a famous beauty blogger and even created her own cosmetics brand. Everyone from renowned models to Hollywood actresses wanted to use her products. Back then, the industry was different. It wasn't about YouTube and different media channels. Instead, people like my mom had to take different avenues to promote their products. I remember how amazing it felt to walk into a drugstore and see my mom's makeup on the shelves. But then, my mom's world came crashing down, and it was all thanks to one lame model. I knew something was up when my dad picked me up from school. He barely ever picked me up. Mom always did. And weirder still, he didn't say a single word to me. Then, I walked into our house to find mom standing in front of the mirror as she smeared makeup all over her face. My mom was a glamorous, perfect-looking woman. I'd never seen her look or act like this before. I remember just staring at her, not knowing what I should do or say. Then she started crying, which caused the makeup to streak down her face. I remember thinking that she looked like a scary clown. She seemed so out of control. In a harsh tone, my dad said to her, Will you just look at yourself? How can you let Sally see you like this? Then he covered my eyes and pulled me out of there. I asked him what was going on, and he sighed and told me how a model had a bad reaction to the products during my mother's live webcast, and now she was getting treatment at the dermatology hospital. She blamed it on my mom's cosmetics products, which meant that both the press teams and police were now involved. Now the beauty industry was boycotting the range that my mom had worked so hard to create. The next day after school, my mom seemed to be in good spirits, she took me for a milkshake, and we sang along to Disney tunes in the car. I thought that everything was back to normal, but then we arrived home, and she sat me down and said to me, Sally, you're going to be my model, and save this family. 
Then she filmed herself applying her makeup products on me. She turned to the camera and said, See, I dare to use my products on my daughter's delicate skin because I know there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. The problem is that footage of a young girl having her makeup done is boring in comparison to the shocking pictures of a famous model with burned skin. All the brands turned their backs on her and she went from super successful entrepreneur to blacklisted overnight. An investigation later proved that the model's skin damage was due to dangerous fake Botox injections, not my mom's products. But this was too little too late, as my mom had already lost all her deals and partnerships, and the money spent on pricey lawsuits made my family bankrupt. After that, mom left the beauty industry behind her. But that afternoon changed my life. I always felt a sense of self-esteem as growing up in an environment full of famous beauties. But that day, after being put on makeup by my mother, I felt so pretty. I looked in the mirror and found myself like all the dream girls I'd seen from my childhood. My new, beautiful appearance made me more confident. Since then, I started practicing makeup. And this obsession doesn't stop until I grow up. By the age of 14, I wouldn't be seen leaving the house without a full face of makeup on. It gave me this added layer of confidence and made me feel ready to face the day. When I had my makeup on, then it didn't matter as much that my parents were now poor. I looked and felt beautiful, and I could handle the world. Now at 25, I still adore makeup. I'm a self-confessed makeup addict. Even my boyfriend, Chris, had never seen my bare face. When I stayed over at his, I went to bed with a full face of makeup on. Then I waited until he'd fallen asleep so I could sneak into the bathroom and take it off and moisturize. Then I woke up two hours before he did, just so I could apply my makeup, then get back into bed and look like I'd just woken up that glamorous. Yes, keeping up appearances was hard work, but when he looked at me like I was the most beautiful girl in the world, well, that made it so worth it. Only on one occasion, Chris woke up early and walked in on me doing my makeup. I totally freaked out and immediately covered my face with my hands and screamed out, No, don't look at me. I'm hideous. He laughed and said, Don't be silly. A bit of makeup doesn't change the fact that I love you and think you're the most beautiful girl in existence. This was sweet and all, but I still shouted at him until he left the room so I could finish off my makeup. His words got me thinking, though. Did he really, truly love me? We'd been together for two years, yet he'd never ever seen me fresh-faced. So how could he possibly know if he loved me if I wasn't wearing it? I couldn't stop thinking about this. I needed to know if he truly loved me for me or not. So I took all my makeup off. Yep, even my clear lip gloss. Then I tied back my hair and put on casual clothes and a pair of sneakers. I was standing right behind him at his favorite cafe. I hesitantly went to the table where he was sitting and was confused as to how to speak. That was when he looked up at me while still scrolling through his phone and said, Yeah, you can take that seat as I'm leaving soon. He didn't recognize me. Interesting. I sat down in front of him, pretending to be a shy, cute girl, and softly starting up a conversation. I tried varying the tone of my voice to ask what I should order, and it worked. He completely thought that I was just some random girl. After we chatted for ages, I said to him, I see you don't really have to leave soon, huh? He smiled and complimented me on being cute. It made me feel a lot more confident. So by then, I had the courage to tell him that I was his girlfriend. But suddenly he grinned and said, If you don't have a boyfriend, I wonder if I have a chance to get to know you? What? He was still in a relationship with me? Unbelievable! Well, another plan just popped up in my head, so I tried to stay calm and replied coyly, I would like that. After that, I started living two different lives. When I put my makeup on and become energetic and attractive, Chris complimented me on how beautiful and charming I was and proudly showed me off to his friends. But when I appeared with a bare face and acted all coy, he said that he loved how sweet and rustic I was and that he thought girls who wore makeup all day were tragic. Tragic? How dare he? He would lie about going out with friends so he could spend more time with makeup free me. Then he kissed makeup me and told me how he loved how glamorous I was and how I was the only girl for him. Yeah, right. I couldn't believe how fake this guy was. There I was thinking he loved me, but now he was cheating on me with me. A playboy like him didn't deserve any version of me. So it was time for revenge. So when he asked makeup for me to go on a trip, I shyly accepted. I knew he just wanted to trick an innocent girl into bed with him. But I'm not an ordinary girl anyways. 
As he was chilling out in the pool, I shyly said I would take a shower and wait for him inside, and I swear I saw his eyes brightened like a magpie. I ran into the bathroom to turn the shower on. Then I left a trail of makeup free me's clothes and then snuck out into the room nearby that I'd booked for the night. There, I transformed into makeup me, then got back ringing the doorbell. Obviously, he had to hurry from the pool to open the door, and when he saw me, he turned so pale. I walked in without his welcome, calmly walked through the luxurious room, and picked up every trace of adultery I'd previously scattered on the floor, the sundress, the bikini, and even lingerie. Then I threw them at him. He was unable to say a word and got panicked when I kept walking straight to the toilet, where there was the sound of a shower pouring water, calmly saying, the person I need to hit is inside, isn't she? He panicked and ran in between me and the door. It's not worth your action, honey. She's nothing. You know you're my only one. I asked him, is she beautiful? Nah, she's boring and old-fashioned. Not like you. I pushed him away and opened the door to enter. He panicked, jumped right behind me, and froze when his mistress was nowhere to be found in the hot shower steam. He probably thought she somehow escaped herself and, at least, saved his life. I still walked in, undressed, and put a bathrobe on myself right in front of him, then walked over to the mirror and started removing my makeup. He was still so bold and shameless. I completely had you fooled. There is no girl. This is my plan to bring you here. Let's enjoy the night, babe. He really had a talent for lying. I just silently removed all the makeup on my face. I've never seen you remove your makeup. Tonight will be really great, he said as he walked over to hug me from behind. I finished by tying my hair up and wiping the steam on the mirror with my hand and said, So, who do you want to sleep with tonight? He looked up into the mirror to see another me and screamed in horror, running away as if he'd seen a ghost. That night, I gloatingly stayed in that luxury hotel room and enjoyed the first day of my single life. Makeup is my passion and hobby, and I won't change it for anyone especially for that kind of guy, but I now realize that I deserve to find a guy who loves me unconditionally, whether I'm the glamorous, makeup-covered version of me, or just plain, coy, makeup-free me. Hey kid, why are you here alone? What's your name? I first noticed this little girl when I discovered this epic pastry shop near my school. She'd always be sitting in the alleyway nearby, wearing the same clothes over and over again, clutching a teddy bear in her arms. She looked up at me with her big, innocent eyes and answered timidly, I... I'm Alex. Then she started crying quietly and said, My mom and dad are always working, so I wait for them here. Sometimes they're gone for days. Oh, this poor little girl. She must have been starving as she kept eyeing my bag of croissants. I gave her one, and she said chocolate croissants were her favorite. Wow, just like me. No wonder I'd felt drawn to this little girl. She ate it so fast, and I told her I'd go buy her another one, and I'd be right back. I couldn't bear to see her so hungry. How could her parents just leave her like that? I ran as fast as I could, but when I got back to the alleyway, she was gone. How weird. I couldn't see her anywhere. I walked home, and that night, I couldn't stop thinking about her. Had her parents come to pick her up? The next day, I went back to the pastry shop, and before I even got there, I heard some kids shouting. I tried to take a closer look, and there Alex was huddled on the ground while the kids threw her teddy bear around. Oh no, she was crying. This made me so angry, so I charged towards them. Hey, leave her alone right now, or you'll have me to deal with. The bullies immediately ran off. I rushed over and put my arm around Alex. She wiped tears from her eyes and said, Thank you. Other than my teddy... You're the only one who wants to be my friend. I swear, the lump in my throat couldn't get any bigger. Then I asked her what happened. She told me how she skipped school because she was bullied for wearing old, smelly clothes. Even the teachers were mean to her, she said. 
Oh gosh, my heart. I couldn't bear this, so I held out my hand. Alex, I can't leave you out here like this. I've always wanted a little sister. So what do you say? I promise I'll protect you. Alex squeezed my hand, which I took as a yes, and then we got up and she asked if she could show me something. It was a playground that she used to go to, and as soon as I saw it, I felt something well up inside me. It looked so familiar. We played on the jungle gym and the swings, and they even had a big slide that was so fun to play on. We played for hours, and it felt like I'd gone back in time to my childhood. Well, if only I could actually remember my childhood. As far as I know, when I was just eight years old, I had a big accident. It gave me a major head injury and wiped my memory completely. Ever since then, I've been going to therapy and taking medication. But it's so weird not being able to remember anything from before. I try to focus on the present, though, and I know I'm lucky to even be alive. However, sometimes the migraines from the accident get really bad, and that's exactly what happened when we were on the swings. One minute, I was looking at the clouds and laughing. The next, I felt myself slipping off the swing and landing on the ground. The last thing I saw was Alex running towards me. When I opened my eyes, I was in a hospital bed, and my parents were there holding my hands. Recently, my migraines had been getting more frequent, and it really worried my mom and dad. My first thought was, where's Alex? I asked my parents if they'd seen an eight-year-old girl, but they looked confused. I realized she'd probably been scared and run off. She was constantly on my mind, though, so as soon as I got out of the hospital a few days later, I went to find her again. She was nowhere to be seen but there was a fire in my heart that kept urging me to find her, so I couldn't give up. I had to find her. I ran to the playground and was relieved to see her on the swings. She looked so sad, so I asked her what was up, and she burst into tears and she said, My family, they lost everything. A gang came to our house and stole everything we own. Even I started crying after hearing that. How could people be so cruel? She then told me she hadn't eaten for days, as her parents now had no money to buy her food. Luckily, I had just bought some chocolate croissants, and she gobbled them both. Meanwhile, my mind was cluttered with thoughts of helping Alex. My savings were barely enough to support her, but maybe my parents could help? They donated to a church in town, so I'm sure they'd be happy to help Alex. I quickly called my mom, and she said she'd love to meet Alex and see what they could do. So I happily told Alex the good news, and we walked straight to my house. I gave her some more food, and we sat on the couch to wait for my parents. Seeing her bright face made me feel so happy. As soon as I heard their car pull up, I ran to the door and said, Mom, Dad, Alex is here. My parents came in and looked around the room. Then my dad said, Um, sweetie, where is she? I pointed to the sofa and said, She was... just there. Then I called her name, but she didn't reply. I didn't get it. Where was she? My mom looked worried and said, Is she too shy? Are you sure she was with you, honey? I frantically checked the whole house, but she was nowhere to be found. I was starting to panic now, but my dad held me and said, Alice, sweetie, calm down. Maybe you just need a rest. Then I heard my mum whispering to him, The severe migraines probably have drained her out again. Get her upstairs. I'll call the doctor to ask about hallucinations. I'm not hallucinating! She's real! Why don't you believe me? I screamed out while trying to break away from my dad's arms. I was feeling dizzy by this point. My head was pounding. And the next moment, everything went dark again. I ended up in hospital again, for the second time that week. Wow, that was a new record. I was lying there pretending to still be unconscious to eavesdrop on my parents chatting to the doctor. Alice has been acting a little strange. She keeps mentioning a homeless girl, and it sounds quite similar to her childhood. Today, she even said she brought her home to meet us. But we can't find her anywhere and I don't think she even exists. 
my mom said. The doctor then said, It's possible that this little girl is actually Alice's lost memories. Sometimes after therapy and medication, old memories can start resurfacing. Maybe this little girl was someone from Alice's childhood. A friend or something. What? This was crazy! Was Alex from my childhood? I didn't understand. I sat bolt upright and stuttered, Are... are you hiding something from me? I could tell right away they were, because my parents looked panicked, and my mom said, Listen, sweetie, it's been a long day for you. Now isn't the right time for this story. But I'll tell you tomorrow, okay? The next day, my parents drove me to the church that they donate to every year. I was so confused and kept asking them who Alex was. Eventually, a nun appeared, and we all sat down in a little room on the third floor. Then the secrets came pouring out. My parents weren't my real parents. After I had the accident, my parents adopted me from the church. They'd picked me up at the hospital right after I recovered and didn't tell me what happened because they didn't want to make my life any harder. They just wanted me to be happy. I couldn't believe it. Then the nun asked me to explain what had been happening recently, and I told her about Alex. As soon as I said her name, the nun looked shocked and quickly pulled out a photo album. She showed me a photo of two twin girls and said, This is you, Alice, holding the teddy bear. And next to you is your twin sister. Her name is Alex. Suddenly, the room was spinning. This was all too much. I had a twin sister? Before I even had time to ask anything, the nun took my hand and led me over to a big window near the stairs. Through her words, all the past memories came rushing back to me. My biological parents had brought me and Alex to the church because they couldn't afford to raise us. No families wanted to adopt both of us, so the nun told us we would be separated. This was the most painful news we'd ever heard. So that night, we decided to escape together. I gave Alex my teddy bear to hold so that I could climb out the window first. But unfortunately, I slipped and fell from such a height that I'm lucky I even survived. That's what wiped all my memories. I stared at the window as the nun told me all of this. This was insane! How many secrets had been hidden from me all this time? So, where is Alex now? I asked, tears rolling down my cheeks. Turns out, Alex had been adopted by another family, but the nuns had lost contact with her because the family had moved overseas. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I had to see my sister, but how could I find her without any information? I started to search social media like crazy, but nothing came up. I wouldn't give up hope, though. I updated my journey finding Alex every day on a personal blog. Not one night I went to sleep without thinking about her and wondering how she was doing. Fortunately, people on the internet actually showed a lot of interest and support for my story. It got passed around, but so far, there still wasn't any hint about Alex. Even the illusion of baby Alex wouldn't show up anymore, ever since the day I heard the truth. But I knew in my bones that we would find our way back to each other again somehow. And then, one morning, I woke up from a strange dream with another migraine, so I decided to take a walk and get some fresh air and drop by the pastry shop for breakfast. I glanced over to the alley as usual, and I saw myself pacing around with a teddy bear in hand, looking kind of lost. Sounds like I'd lost the plot, right? Well, I hadn't, because it actually was Alex. We were frozen for like a whole minute when our eyes met. Then, without a single word being said, we just ran into each other's arms in tears. So, long story short, Alex had moved to France since 10, and ever since then, she'd also been trying to find me. Thanks to a post on Twitter, she realized I was still here, and so she applied for a scholarship to America so she could find me. And, well, there she was, standing right in front of me. Words can't express how unreal it still was to look at her every time. Oh, don't worry. Everyone, including my parents, have confirmed 
she's an actual person, not another product of my imagination. <laughs> Thank God. I can't believe the crazy roller coaster ride that my life has been on for the past months. From that moment on, we were inseparable. And now, we're planning on moving in together. The only thing left for us to do is to find our biological parents. Alex remembers them clearly, so she's been filling me in on the first eight years of our life together. Wish us luck! Oh god, my Roger. Look at him. Those chiseled features and dreamy eyes. No wonder every girl swoon at the sight of him. And of course, me. His biggest fan is no exception. <sighs> You're probably wondering how I got into the backstage area of a star actor like Roger, right? It's simple. His makeup artist is Hannah, and she just so happens to be my big sister. Of course, I had to beg her for days to let me tag along. That's why I have to embrace every second of being this close to my celebrity crush. Hey, are you taking pictures of me? Oh no, busted. I was stammering, trying to come up with some excuse, when to my surprise, Roger lifted my phone and took a selfie. Here you go, baby girl. Next time, just ask. Oh my, there's no denying that Roger is boyfriend material. The girls from my class will definitely be turning green once they know this. Oh, he wants some orange juice? No problem, Roger. Just call me your own personal genie. Then I rushed around to find some OJ and hurried backstage to give it to him. But too late, his other fangirls had beat me to it. There were enough juices for him to drink all year round now. Sadly, I turned around to leave, but accidentally bumped into someone. Holy moly, it's Roger! He smiled at me and looked down at the cup of fresh orange juice in my hands. May I borrow your OJ? This is my number if you need it. What does this mean? Have I, an ordinary girl, caught the eye of the hottest guy on the planet? Ouch! This is clearly not a dream! For the rest of the evening, I tried composing the perfect message to him. Ugh, why was it so hard? I must have typed and deleted it at least 100 times. Oh no! I just pressed the send button by accident! Before I could remove that message, he already replied. That's it. There's no turning back now. I tried to calm myself down and went with the flow, which then led us to hours of long conversation. And soon, we were talking every day. One day, out of the blue, he said he wanted us to have a private date. Does that mean our relationship has moved on to the next level? <coughs> our first date was at this low-key diner with very few customers. I disguised myself just like what Roger told me to and waited for him. <sighs> but it's been an hour in vain. Did he really stand me up? I glumly got up to leave when a sweaty, out-of-breath Roger appeared. Turns out he struggled to lose his security guards just to come and see me. It's so sweet that he went to all this effort for a normal girl like me. No need for a fancy restaurant nor extravagant gifts. This diner was already the most romantic, as I had a real gentleman right here. Don't wake me up from this dream ever. Then, before we parted, he gently put a daisy bracelet on my wrist. Dating in secret is pretty exciting, right babe? Oh boy. This proved that I was no longer just a mere fangirl having a crush on her idol. Yep, we were officially dating in secret. The next day, I arrived at school in the best mood ever. I was singing on the way to class when my friend Alba startled me. Hey, have you watched a new trailer for Roger's upcoming film? It's dope. I booked a ticket for the sneak show already. <laughs> That's nothing. I already got a slot at the movie premiere. Jealous much? Huh, <laughs> that's the power of a fan club's vice president. And for me, I just had the most romantic dinner date ever with Roger. Oh, of course, that's only what I wish I could say. In fact, I could just smile and then head on to my seat. <sighs> Keeping this secret is driving me crazy. But I guess dating an idol comes with a price, and I don't mind paying for it my whole life. <laughs> But okay, on top of all the secrecy, as y'all know, celebrities are always occupied, having no private time left. So we have to come up with inventive ways to get some alone time. 
Finally, Anne had left. Let's see, hair, makeup, clothes, everything was perfect. No one seemed around. Now I needed to hurry to Roger's van. Hey, Hannah, why are you still here? Wow, look at you, all dressed up, huh? What's the occasion? <laughs> oh, um, I just forgot my stuff. See ya. And then I rushed behind the vanity van. Phew, so close. It's a good thing I look a lot like my sister and have picked up some great makeup tips from her, so it's a piece of cake for me to pretend to be Hannah and sneak into the filming site. <laughs> Let me see if you're my adorable Harper. While praising my excellent disguise, Roger suddenly went silent. Then he turned into a completely different person. His attitude changed. He pushed me away, poured his coffee onto his shoes, and started yelling at me. What on earth are you doing? Do you know how much these cost? Clean them! What just happened? I reached my arm out and asked if I'd upset him, but a woman swung my hand away. Take your filthy hand off my son! Oh, it's Roger's mom, Mrs. Walker, the chairwoman of the film production company, known by the entire industry for being a bossy lady who always caused others difficulties. Worse still, the buzzing sound outside also started growing louder. Oh no, I better not cause any trouble here. So I kept my gaze at the ground and frantically apologized. Suddenly, a hand grabbed my arm and pulled me away. It was Danielle, Roger's manager. Don't be bothered too much if he acted a little off. It was just too stressed from work. I'm Roger's older sister, by the way. We were super close, so I understand him better than anyone. OMG, I didn't know he had an older sister. <laughs> but I know about you. Every time he sees you, his eyes fill with happiness. It's kind of obvious. Oh, um, we... You don't have to say anything. I'll keep your love story a secret. It turned out that Danielle knew everything and didn't say a word because she knew it would embarrass us. After that, she drove me home and we exchanged numbers. Roger wasn't being very responsive, so it was nice having Danielle to talk to, as she was very supportive of our relationship and kept me up to date with the schedule. A whole week has passed since that day with no reply from Roger. Nothing. Not a single phone call. I also texted his new phone number that Danielle gave me, but still zilch. Sometimes, I don't know if I really have a boyfriend or not. I just want to experience what other couples have. <sighs> Stop wasting your time fantasizing about a guy far out of your league. It's so tragic, especially now he has a girlfriend. He's totally betrayed us. What did she just say? Girlfriend? I hurriedly went online and saw a photo of Roger and Jessica, a hot singer, looking cozy backstage. So he was ghosting me to be with her? My heart felt like it was going to burst into flames. I immediately texted Danielle and she replied straight back, complaining that she was also having a headache with Jess's dirty PR tricks to promote her new album. Oh, phew. So it's just a silly rumor. What a relief. Besides, for the past few days, Roger hadn't contacted me at all because he'd been busy filming a new movie in Paris. He would be back soon, and he was gonna hold a small meet and greet downtown. Danielle suggested I should show up and surprise him, and she even cleared up Roger's schedule that day so we could go on a date after the event. Wonderful, Danielle! That day, I went to the meet and greet and disguised myself so perfectly that Roger wouldn't recognize me. He would be so surprised to see me here. To be honest, I don't like my man doing all those kinds of air kisses or hugs with fans, but well, that's his job, and I should be understanding. Besides, I used to fall for these sweet gestures as a fan too. Roger, are any of these dating rumors true? Well, I just thought, you know, I'm better off focusing on my work and you guys. You're my true supporters. Unlike all the girls out there who only approach me for fame and money. What does he mean? So he just sees me as one of those cloud chasing girls out there? I seem to be out of breath among the excited howls of his fans and I couldn't stay here much longer. I was sobbing as I ran outside, thinking about how Roger actually thought of me, of us, all this time. Suddenly, a car stopped in front of me. It was Danielle. I know it's hard being in love with a celebrity, but from a fan's perspective, that's something they want to hear from him. 
Of course he can't speak up about his real relationship, but you can. You mean, there's nothing wrong with your love, and we have plenty of other ways to express it discreetly, right? What Danielle said got me thinking. Sophie teases me every day for dreaming about dating my idol, but this relationship is real, and I have the right to show off my love, right? So, I posted my favorite picture from one of our dates on Instagram as a way to pour my heart out. The next morning, I woke up to see an angry text from Roger. Harper, why did you break our promise? Why did you disclose our relationship? Things are a mess now. Underneath, it was the link to a tweet along with the title, Young actor Roger is suspected of dating someone 10 years his senior. Oh no 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 no, how did they find my photo that quickly? And worse, they must have mistaken the person in the picture to be my sister, Hannah. Well, at least my sister is on vacation, so she hasn't found out about this yet. I must fix this before she comes back, or else she's gonna kill me. I tried to contact both Roger and Danielle, but got no response. What to do? Ah, Roger is having a press conference for his new movie. I'll go there and talk to him directly. I use Hannah's pass card to rush backstage in the hope Roger would be there, but wait, there's only Mrs. Walker and her staff. You better clean up this scandal immediately. Don't let it affect the conference. So annoying. That makeup artist must be using some tricks to take advantage of Roger. Now she will know what it's like to have her career ruined. Oh no, I can't let that happen. Please don't do this. It's not Hannah in the picture. It was me, her sister. Roger and I are in love. <laughs> I never said I loved you, so stop making a fool of yourself. Sorry, Mom. I was just playing around with her because I was bored. Let me handle this. What? I thought he was different. Turns out he's just another jerk who uses fame to flirt with girls. We're over! I shouted then sprinted out of there. For days after that, more Twitter videos were posted from Roger's alleged staff claiming he was arrogant and rude. It serves him right, I guess. However, I began to wonder about the fact that there weren't a lot of people there at those moments. Who could have been the one taking those videos? Suddenly, a Twitter notification popped up and brought me back to reality. Wait, it's that account, isn't it? The fans were still furious with Roger. Scrolling through the articles about him, I saw a bunch of comments telling everyone to cancel him. They even shared a picture of Roger going to bars and getting drunk the night before his apology press conference. Even though I was mad at him, I couldn't just switch off my feelings. So I took an Uber to the bar to find Roger, but because of my age, the security guard stopped me. As I was trying to find a way to sneak inside, I saw a familiar figure. It was Roger, sitting on the steps of the bar's back door. Hey, you alright? I'll call Danielle to come pick you up. No, please. I'm too tired of having bodyguards and a manager follow me 24-7. I just want to be alone now. Harper, I'm sorry for hurting you all this time. I just want to say, it was real. I really do love you. I did what I did because I was so worried that my adoptive mom would harm you if she knew about us. Your adoptive mom? Yeah. I'm not Mrs. Walker's biological son. She recognized my acting talent, so she adopted me when I was 11. Since then, I've been nothing more than a money-making machine to her. He then told me how his pure passion for acting was starting to be worn out by all these pressures of being a celebrity, especially now that he knew someone was behind all the recent scandals. I know who's behind it all, so do show up at the press conference as planned and I'll take care of the rest. I waited for Roger to finish his apology for all the scandals. Then I went up to address the crowd. All of the rumors are fake. I know this because I'm the girl from the video. And the person who filmed and edited it to make it look bad was his manager, Danielle. I pointed to her and amidst the gasps, all eyes and cameras shifted to her. Wh what This is slander. You have no proof. Then, I held up my phone and played a video recording of Sophie admitting that Danielle was giving her the videos to upload on the internet. Actually, on the presentation day, Sophie accidentally revealed her secret Twitter account, which was none other than at Cancel Roger, the one of the so-called staff. So I confronted her right away and told her that she could be sued for defaming others. 
When I first heard the rumor about Roger having a girlfriend, I was blinded by jealousy, so I listened to Danielle. Given that she's his manager, how could I not believe that those videos were true? As his fan club vice president, I had my members' best interests at heart, so please, don't sue me. Fine, it was me. So what? I need to show mom that Roger's not as special as she thinks she is. I knew Roger liked Harper, so I approached her and used the relationship to ruin his career. Then, mom would finally notice me. Whoa, what a twist, right? So what now? Well, Mrs. Walker and Danielle's true intentions were exposed for all to see. This cleared Roger of all the scandals and his fans are all back together to support him again. He has a new manager now and they have no problem with him publicly dating me. Oh, and as for Hannah, arriving back from her trip to discover she'd been dating one of her celebrity clients didn't go down too well with her. <laughs> But it's not all bad, since she now has loads of bookings after this scandal. So if anything, she has me to thank for being more in demand than ever. 